Mobile Eye can be anywhere you want it. When you're an eyewitness, call the Mobile Eye Hotline, TV 22222. Meet Roller Derby's meanest mama on Monday's Evening Magazine. No fans, this is not a chorus line. It's the pitching core that slammed the door on the Expos last night in the Pirates' doubleheader sweep. The Bucks will be on Montreal's stage again tonight, looking for victory number three and the chance to move into first place. TV2 presents Pirate Baseball 79. Tonight from Olympic Stadium, the Bucks meet the Expos. Pirate Baseball 79 is brought to you in part by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And in part by Mellon Bank. You get a good feeling for saving at Mellon Bank. Messages promoting attendance at Pirate Games are paid for by the Pittsburgh Athletic Company, Incorporated. Hello again, everybody. This is Milo Hamilton along with Nelson Bryles. And of course, in the middle, Lanny will be joining Nellie in the booth on the television side. Boy, the sweep last night. The Cubs have already been beaten today, despite the fact King Kong tried to put on a one-man gang show at Shea against the Mets. The Mets beat him, though. So that sets the stage for a chance to go to number one. Boy, that's, uh, that's enough to get anybody up and the players they're kind of kidding about it, but they know that tonight, about 10 o'clock, if they could be there, that's the spot they've been shooting for. Well, this, as you say, is a spot they've been shooting for for so long. We've had a long uphill fight to this point. Tonight is such an important game, not only to maintain this momentum, but tomorrow we have the tough shadows to deal with and another tough pitcher in Steve Rogers. So tonight's an important game. If we can pull this one, it guarantees us at least we get three out of the four games. And big Jim Bibby, who's been pitching so well, going after his seventh win against the left-hander Dan Schatzeter. And we're going to take a look at the lineups that go with those two pitchers right after this message. You know, trying to run a Major League Baseball club isn't all fun and games. The pressure's always on. And for guys like us, there's no off season. So when you win and deal as much as we do, you can't afford to get filled up. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it tastes great too. How about the trade? How about throwing in Bud Harrelson? Let's see, Bud Harrelson, Gates Brown, and Mudcat Grant. Right, the two blue pals and a fair thing. Light well, beer from Miller. Right, Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. I want a Frank Malzone. I'm at my best when I have a little freedom. I like to do things, like restoring this beauty. Mellon Bank's personal cash reserve is great for me. It gives me money and the freedom to use it when, where, and how I please. So I don't miss out on the good things that come up. And I don't have to ask someone every time I need money. Personal cash reserve is a loan I write myself. Having money Thank when you need it. This is Mellon Banking. <laughs> Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. Box 222, Pittsburgh 15230. And during tonight's game, We'll have three Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes innings. The jackpot is now back up to $500, so you stay with us for all the home run sweepstakes excitement as the Bucks battle the Expos right here in Montreal. The umpires have already gotten the lineups. We're going to take a look at the starting lineup for the Bucks that will be going against this left-hander, Dan Schatzeter, who comes in with a record of 5-3. and three. Omar Moreno lays it off and plays center. Tim Foley is the shortstop batting second. Dave Parker will be in right field, and the Cobra will bat third. Our cleanup hitter tonight with the left-hander going is first baseman Bill Robinson. Lee Lacey's going to start in left field. Lee will bat in the five spot. Batting sixth and playing third, Bill Madlock. The second baseman and the hottest hitter on the club right now and maybe in the league, if you look around, Phil Garner, because he's moved up into the top ten. Scraps playing second base, batting seven. The number eight hitter is the rookie catcher Steve Nicosia, and on the mound, Jim Bibby. So that's the way it'll be against that left-hander, number 36, Dan Schatzeter. The Montreal lineup for Dick Williams that'll be going against Bibby. Warren Cromartie, the left fielder, will start it off. Rod Scott will play second and bat second. Andre Dawson is back in the three spot playing center field. 
Tony Perez, first baseman, batting cleanup. Gary Carter, the catcher, will bat fifth. Batting sixth for Montreal and playing right field, Ellis Valentine. Larry Parrish is their third baseman and he will bat seventh. Chris Spire is the shortstop batting eighth. And Dan Schatzeter, with a record of five and three, will be batting ninth. So now you've seen the lineups, you've looked at the pitchers, the crowd is up at Olympic Stadium, and you're going to hear the singing of the two national anthems. The Expo is being introduced. They're going onto the field, and as soon as they get into their spots, we'll be setting up the defense that'll be playing behind the left-hander Dan Schatzeter. Schatzeter, five and three this year. He is 0 and two last year against us, and one and two lifetime against the Bucks. He pitched a scoreless inning against us earlier in the year. In fact, the first series, the first weekend at home at Three Rivers, and he was not the pitcher of record. We won that game. That was Game Two on a Saturday. And as they get out to the field now, everybody's just about in place. The pitcher shots are headed toward the mound. So let's place them for you on the field. This will be the Montreal defensive lineman. Schatzeter and Carter, the battery. Schatzeter 36 on the mound. Carter number eight behind the plate. On their infield, Tony Perez 24 at first. Rodney Scott, the first second baseman. Chris Beyer back in there going to play a second straight game after baseman. And in their outfield tonight, Andre Dawson, number 10, plays center. He's flanked by Warren Cromarty, number 49, and left. And Ellis Valentine, number 17, is the right fielder. Dan Schatzeter. So this is a night when the right-hand batters have to come to the front for us, Nelly. Well, it is, and it also gives our left-handers uh, a little bit of rest. We get to rest Willie Stargell with the bruised hip. Uh, John Milner, who has been ailing somewhat, he gets uh, a little bit of rest. And it gives Lee Lacey a little bit of playing time for us and some at-bats. So there's a lot of pluses going for us tonight, and uh, we want those right-handed batters to come through for us. This is the way it sets up. Montreal is 54 and 41 at the moment. We are 55 and 43. The Cubs, by losing, drop back to 11 over 500. They're 54 and 43. We've slipped by them into second place out of a virtual tie. So if we can win, we go to the top by a half a game. So somewhere around uh, 10 o'clock, maybe the Buccos will be celebrating that kind of a victory. 325 to the foul poles here, 375 to each of the power alleys, and 404 to straightaway center. 
Omar Moreno will be leading it off. The Antelope is two for seven in the series. He's hit safely in 16 of his last 20 games. He's hitting 292. Been to bat more than any pirate, as you would expect, being in that leadoff spot most of the way. Leads us in runs, 68. Hits 121, triples nine. And leads in stolen bases with 43. So it'll be Moreno, Foley, and Parker, and we're set for the first pitch of the game. Shots that are working, and here it is, and it's a ball. We're underway. Al Monchek coaching at first, Joe Lynette at third. So that puts everybody on the field, and the 1-0 to Omar. And he gets the corner on the inside. That'll make it even one and one. Parrish is playing up in front of the bank at third. Missed with that one, makes it two balls and a strike. Shortstop probably cheating by a step and a half, and the second baseman by a couple of steps. Two balls and one strike. Their outfield plays him as an off field hitter in left and in center, and he fouls it back here to the left side. That'll level the count at two and two. Omar were to pull the ball a little bit toward right center, it's off and running for Omar. He can run for days out there. We pretty, pretty good outfield to run in, and uh, Omar's got a good shot at it. He, he pulls the ball enough to keep them honest. I don't understand them shifting over this much. Two balls, two strikes. Unless, of course, Chancellor said in the meeting, I'm going to throw everything away. But actually, three of the pitches that he's thrown have been inside. And breaking balls. So as a result, uh, he's giving them pitches that he can pull. Two and two. Schatzeter was waiting there a moment for Omar to get back in. They're both ready again. And the 2-2 on the way. Low inside makes it full. Omar Moreno, what a year he has had. Accepted the challenge of going to that leadoff spot. Conducted himself very well and going right along with his great outfield play now with the good bat. There is a shot through the right side of base hit. Got it between first and second on into right field. Omar gets his third hit of the series. And let's take a look at how he took at the cut at this one. Yes, sir. Concentrating on the pitch right there. Nice, compact, level swing right on through. That's why he got the base hit. Then he's ready to scat on down the first base. Ball right on through the hole. Ellis Valentine picks up the ball, tries to hold him to a single. Gives him 122 hits. Winfield and Matthews, that's Winfield of San Diego and Matthews of Atlanta, came into today with 130. With all that scoring that took place in Atlanta in that first of two, Matthews probably didn't get shut out. Foley showed bunt, then took a strike over the outside corner. And by the way, there was a change in the scoring last night. Although a lot of our fans Nelly do keep scorecards, he was given a sacrifice in the first inning of that first game last night, so he would be one for six coming in with two RBIs. Hitting 276 against the league. There's a little looping pop uh, out behind first base. Second baseman goes over to get it. Hung up a long time. So Foley out on a little lazy pop fly. Oh, 20, 25 feet behind first base as you saw it. And Scott made the play, and it's one down. So Moreno's still on with one away now, and Parker will be the batter. Parker batting 294. Leads us in doubles 25, RBIs 59. He's hit 16 homers, one of them against this club. And he comes in two for seven in the series. It'll be left-hander against left-hander. And Moreno at first base. He's out to the edge of the carpet as he's waiting for Parker to step in. He might even take another half step when the pitcher finally does read the sign. Nope, doesn't take the big lead this time. Fly ball right field Valentine back but just takes a look and watches it go over the fence. It's a two run homer. The Cobra goes long ball on the left hander Schetzeter. Parker gets his 17th homer gives him 61 RBIs and I believe that's a milestone. That should be his 500th run batted in it is he needed a pair. He just got him. And let's see where the pitch was that he was able to pull it out of here. This is a ball that's down and over the plate, a ball that he hasn't been getting lately. He doesn't let this one go by, being that he hasn't seen too many lately. 
He got it all. Hit a rocket right on out of here. Ellis Valentine didn't even hardly turn around to watch the ball get out of the ballpark. He just kind of gave it a little token glance to watch it go out, and that was all. And there they are. Look at Garner. <laughs> Scrap's probably been on him all day saying, how does it feel to be around a 300 hitter like me? And <laughs> you know how they are. This is Robinson, one for five in the series with three ribbies, and that is a ball. And the count is even at one and one. Robinson hitting 276, 21 homers to lead the club, 54 RBIs. Parker's second home run against Montreal. The other was off Grimsley. Bouncer toward the hole, but Spire was cheating a little on Robinson, made the play, and it's two down. So that's an interesting aspect of Parker hitting two home runs against this club and both off lefties. Well, Dave says he doesn't really care whether you're right or left-handed. He hangs in there very well both sides, and all he wants to do is make sure that He's swinging at good pitches, and uh, he did that when he hit the home run. Boy, he got all of it. Got out of here in a hurry. And the pitch is way high to Lacey. Lacey coming into the night, batting 261. He has three homers, one against this club. That's Parker's uh, first home run in a while. He came out of a dry spell. The last time he had home run was on the 11th of July in Houston off James Rodney Richard. There's a drive to left. That ball's going to be right up against the wall. Lacey's going to dig. He's going to have to hit the dirt. And he's in there with a hustling double. That ball bounced right back for Cromarty. And let's see just how they play it and how the ball gets out there for Lee Lacey. Well, here's the pitch from Shasseter. He's down and over the plate again one more time. He's getting the ball down, but it's still over the center part of the plate. And we can see there's just a line drive off the left field wall. Cromarty makes a good play off the wall and almost gets Lacey a second base. But uh, as you say, it was a hustling job by Lee Lacey. Didn't take anything for granted and pulls in with a double. Yeah, because when he was going around first, he was already digging. So that way he was in there. And now with that double, it gives Lacey seven for the year. And Bill Madlock, the batter. Madlock hitting 284, nine homers, 51 runs batted in. Ball one. Last night went two for six. Bill has hit safely in 13 of his last 14 games as Schatzeter has had some balls socked off of him here. Moreno's single was hit sharply. Parker's home run was a line drive. Lacey line drive double. That'll make it one on the dog. And Geiner with that very, very hot bat would be next. Bucks are in front two to nothing on the Parker rocket shot to right. One ball, one strike. Did he go? Yes, he did. We've now hit 13 home runs off Montreal. And this is our 11th game with him. We got seven games remaining. So last year, one of the clubs we hit the most against, we hit 17 against them. I say we got a heck of a shot to beat that. Boy, this club's pounding that ball these days. Might even approach it here tonight and tomorrow. Here's the pitch. Popped right side. Tony Perez has it. And the side has been retired, but the Bucks get on the board. So our family has started off crunching Schatzeter, and there's the blow that did it. Two runs on three hits. There weren't any errors, and one man left. We played a half an inning. Our Bucks are in front with two runs and three hits. The home standing expos are just now coming into bat. Hey, how'd you like some free gasoline when you fill up? <laughs> I like it a lot. Change to Quake Estate Sterling Motor Oil. You're telling me an oil change? We'll get you better gas mileage. See, Quake Estate Sterling is a different kind of oil. Specially blended to lubricate better than regular oils. Less friction, so your engine will work less hard. And use less gasoline. It'll be like getting extra gas for free. Change to Quake Estate Sterling. It's like getting free gas with every tank full. How come so many professionals wear Brute? Because the great smell of Brute makes a guy feel good. And that's important when you've got to take on the world every day. That's why so many professionals also wear Brute 33 antiperspirant spray. It helps keep you dry, and it gives you that long-lasting deodorant protection. And it has the great smell of Brute. Hey, if you're going to smell great, why not smell great all over? Take on the world with Brute 33 deodorants and antiperspirants. Spray, stick, and roll on. 
All right, as the Expo mascot does his dance on their dugout roof, Jim Bibby's done his warming up, and this is the defense that's going to be behind him. Out in center field, Omar Moreno, 18, flanked by Dave Parker, 39 and right, and Lee Lacey, 17 and left. On the infield, Bill Robinson, 28 at first base, Bill Garner, number three at second. Number 10 is the shortstop, Tim Foley, and number five, Bill Madlock at third. Bibby's battery mate is 16, Steve Nicosia, and big Jim Bibby, 26 out on the mound. Record 6 and 2, good ERA, 295. 21st appearance, sixth start of the year. And Cromartie going to lead it off. Cromartie, 3 for 8 last night of the doubleheader, drove in a run. He got the only run batted in against Blylevin in the Dutchman's route going performance to get us the sweep. And the fastball slides outside, and it's 1 0. Cromartie hitting 289, six homers, 35 runs batted in. Up high. Bibby with his six and two record is looking at the Expos for the first time this year. He was one and one last year. He's two and two lifetime. Cromartie, Scott, and Dawson as we go to the bottom of the first. We're five and five with Montreal. We're three and two with them here in their own backyard. And that's a strike makes it two and one. Tomorrow it'll be Keeson against Rogers. We'll be home Monday night against the New York Mets. Play a pair Monday and Tuesday with Joe Torrey's crew. Fouled off, way out of play up to the left side. And on Wednesday and Thursday, Kenny Boyer brings the Redbirds from St. Louis in. Two games, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Friday night, it heats up a little more. Friday night, doubleheader with the Phillies. Saturday afternoon, week from today, Phillies again. And a week from tomorrow, doubleheader with the Phillies at Three Rivers. Oh, he smoked him on that one, didn't he? Boy, that he did. That's just rearing back and letting it fly. The high heat, he couldn't catch up with it. Let's take another look. That ball was up a little, maybe. That was rising. No way he'd catch up with that ball. <laughs> he'd missed with a couple of fastballs to start off, and then gets him with one. All right, here's Rod Scott with 0 for 7 in the doubleheader last night. Scott batting 237, ball one, switch hitter. Better hitter right handed, 289 compared to what he's batting left handed, as you see him now, 224. He's hit a couple homers, 31 ribbies, one of the homers against the Bucks, and that'll even it, one ball, one strike. Rodney Scott played his way right onto this club with a good spring training. They haven't been able to get him out of there. Oh boy. Scott looking around and say, well, maybe it sounded like a strike. Bibby's got some velocity right now. There's a big guy who's been pitching so well of late with a chance to pitch his team into the top rung in the East. Woo! Oh boy. If he hasn't got all the speed that it looks like he has, Steve Nikosha is wearing his popper, I'll tell you that. Well, I think it's a combination of both, but uh, we're seeing right now that Jim Bibby isn't messing around with breaking balls, off-speed pitches at all. He's just rearing back right now and saying, try and catch up with it if you can. Well, he probably feels strong. He's had the good rest. Pitching uh, in a night game here. And this is Andre Dawson, 0 for 7 in the doubleheader last night. Dawson batting 267. Put a little wrinkle in that one, but still hard stuff. Dawson leads them in runs 56, triple six, home run 17, and RBIs 54. Also leads them in strikeouts. He struck out 73 times in the 92 games in which he has appeared. High pop. Looks like an easy inning for Bibbs. Foley is in shallow center, and he'll squeeze it. And indeed it is a one, two, three inning for Jim Bibby. We've played an inning. Hope you're enjoying a Saturday night with Pirate Baseball. What a night this could be. A night to remember. Go to the top tonight. That's what the Bucks are shooting for, and they're off to a good start. It's Pirates 2, Montreal nothing. Hey, did you play today? Yeah, my bowling score. I didn't know they had numbers that low. <laughs> Did you remember to play today? Our new address, straight. Hey, that plays 500 to 1. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock. Good evening, everyone. It's time for the live drawing of the Daily Number. The Daily Number. It's a big hit. Play today, watch tonight. Great buy. I can have it delivered tomorrow. Great number. I can play it tomorrow. That's it. It's here.
the Grand Olds Gang's great year-end drive away. Fact, incredible values, huge selection of Cutlass Supremes in stock, no waiting for delivery. Fact, you'll never buy one for less. 79s have to move before the 80s arrive. Fact, save hundreds of dollars. The Grand Olds Gang gives bigger new car discounts than any small foreign car dealer. The Grand Olds Gang's great year-end drive away. There'll never be a better time to buy. Well, a week from now, yes, next weekend, the Phillies are coming to Pittsburgh, and the Pirates are calling on all you fans to turn out in force at Three River Stadium. August 3rd, the Phillies and Pirates will play a twilight doubleheader starting at 6.05. Single game Saturday afternoon, followed by a big Sunday doubleheader on the 5th. Pirates asking all their loyal fans to come out to Three Rivers to help spur the Bucks on to victory. You can be the Pirates' 10th man on the field. Contribute to bringing the pennant back to Three Rivers. Tickets going fast, so get them now. Call 323-1150 for further information. Pirates and the Phillies, and you want to be there. Garner, after the big doubleheader last night, looks at a strike as he opens up the second. Scrap's got his batting average up to 315. He's up in some high cotton right now with that batting average. One and one with that one. Foster leads the league. He's disabled. Winfield, Templeton, Hernandez, Garvey, Hendrick, and then Garner at 315. Just a bit inside. Now Stargell is hitting 319, but has not picked up enough at bats to qualify for the top 10, or he'd be right in there. There's a line drive to right center. Coming on hard is Valentine. So Garner, who went six for eight last night, they get him the first time up tonight, but he still had pretty good wood on the ball. Well, he has. He said he's right now he's seeing the ball very, very well. He has a, a good idea of the strike zone, so he's being very selective at the plate. And he said, and I'm right now my hands and eyes are working very well together, and he's able to make very sharp, crisp contact. Steve Nicosia, the young catcher, batting 252, three homers, nine ribbies. Caught the game last night against Grimsley, went one for three, and drove in a run in that game. That's a ball. Started the breaking pitch high and outside, tried to bring it in, but it stayed out there, and it's one ball, no strikes. Pitcher Bibby will be next. Foul down the left side. One and one to Nicosia. So after we get home Monday night, Oh, you talk about the games getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They just seem to get that way, don't they? And with the schedule we've been in and piling up those wins, and that's the way to do it, and that's a strike. When we leave home a week from tomorrow, there's a high foul bending down the right side. I don't think it's going to be playable. Nope, lands down in their bullpen. I got a feeling a Valentine comes over and and Diggs, he makes that play. Parker puts that ball in his hip pocket. Well, I tell you, it's not only our observation, but I think the uh, 35,000 plus in the stadium uh, agree with us. He didn't give that ball the type of effort that uh, he should have. That's what we've talked about uh, the last couple of nights, talking about balls hit towards stands. You cannot take it for granted they're going in because they'll come back for you. A lot of talent, but desire is not foremost among his attributes two and two line foul down past the bullpen area on the left side it'll kick around the curve and Cromartie will play it two and two Nicosia batting nobody on one away Pirates leading two to nothing on a line drive homer by Parker with Moreno aboard in the first inning we're in the top of the second now Game three in a four game series. Bucks won the doubleheader last night to get within a half a game. Wrap it up here tomorrow. Fouled off. It'll be radio only tomorrow, but we sure hope you're going to join us for it. When you've got Bruce Keeson and Steve Rogers, a couple of guys that are not going to give in. <laughs> That's tomorrow afternoon here. Two balls, two strikes. Now he goes full. Dan Schatzler. And he walked him. Looked like he tried to hit the same spot again, but missed both times. He sure did. I'll tell you, let's, let's take a look right here at uh, Schatzler. I think he thought he had a pitch. 
He lets go, and it was a breaking ball on three and two. He's looking at it. Yeah, I got it in there. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's just what he said. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> Bibb shows bunt, but lets it go low. Ball one. That's what you always said when they missed them. That's right. You son of a gun back there. I think you missed it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the goes you first with a walk one out. Bibby going to square away to bunt again. And he kind of pushes at it, but comes up empty, and the count will go even. Bibby with his bat has had a couple of hits. One of them was a homer that won a game. Drove in a couple of runs with it. Got that home run off Mickey Mailer of the Braves in the second game of the doubleheader last Sunday at Three Rivers. <laughs> Bibbs looking back. It's his turn to squawk. I think he, he thought the ball was low and outside. Well, that's one of those spots where if you can react to it enough, the way Parrish was charging, if you can pull that bat back and beat that ball down, it's going to jump over him because Parrish was within about 20 feet of him, it looked like. Almost reach out and touch him. Strikeout. First one recorded by Schatzeter. Parrish was so close to Bibby on the preceding pitch, he might have gotten third baseman's interference if he'd have swung the bat. Up to the top we go with Omar Moreno. I want to remind you this copyrighted telecast is authorized under television rights granted by the Pirates. It's only for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures. Descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Pirates is prohibited. Nikosia's at first with two out. Moreno, who singled through the right side in the first inning and then scored on Parker's homer, waiting for Schatzeter's delivery. Ball one. Omar really hitting well against the first place Expos pitching his single in the first inning with his 17th hit in 39 at bats puts him up like something 440 against them for the year. Ball two. Schatzeter a frustrating first couple of innings Nelly because he's really not missing that much is he just enough to not really do any great compensating just try to keep doing what he's doing and hoping the ball will fall in for him well one of his two locations has been very good so far he's been down but he's missed either over the plate and we've heard him or he's been just off the plate now he's got to try and coordinate both of them then he might be tough two balls one strike Omar stepping back a moment pulling up those batting gloves All right, he's ready, so the left-hander on the mound should be. Schatzeter takes a peek at the runner. Falls behind Omar, three and one, with Tim Foley on deck. Took his frustration out on the <laughs> rosin bag that time. Three balls, one strike. That is a walk and it's the second one of the inning. Now Tim Foley will be coming on. Foley last time up in the first inning a little popper out behind first base and the second baseman coming over to make the catch on it. So Tim is 0 for 1 came into tonight having hit safely in eight of his last 11 games. Two on two out. Pirates leading two to nothing. Parker got a soft and running with a line drive homer over the right field fence. You saw the runners that are there for Foley. Both of them with walks. They asked for an appeal on that. Umpire at first said no, he didn't. So it goes as a ball. Akoja with one out walked. He's now at second. Moreno with two outs walked. The Antelopes at first. There's Nikosia number 16 as you look in from center. That's right back up the middle of Bullock. Nikosia's coming home. The throw toward the plate is going to be off target about 12 feet up the left side. Nikosia's home, so one of the walks has blossomed into another run. Oh, did Foley. That ball was hit so hard to jump back through the middle, Nelly. 
They sure did. Here the ball was over the plate and wasn't quite down enough. And Timmy just took it right back through the middle, got a good wood on it. The ball is charged very well by Andre Dawson. He's trying to throw out Steve Nikoshi at home, but uh, Steve was off and running with a with a hit. Really no play at home. And we've got runners on first and second, right in the middle of the game, ready to break it open. Three to nothing, and Parker, who homered in the first inning, has a chance to fatten the cat for Big Jim Bibby. There's no action in their bullpen as yet. Chancer has been no puzzle if you just take a look at the things that have been going on here. Four hits and a couple of walks and three runs on the board already for the visiting Buckos. Parker now three for eight in the series. Maybe that home run will get him on a tear. That's what he's hoping for. He wants to get back up over that 300 mark. Came in hitting 294. A little tight. Ball one. Willie Stargell was working with David around the batting cage both yesterday and today telling him to use his hands get those top hands over get your hands through the pitch instead of you know inside outing, outing the ball and oh, boy, when, he, when he hit that home run that's exactly what he did he got those hands through there was some talk too about maybe he's been trying so hard to get back in a groove that he was bent out over the plate too much was Willie talking to him at all about maybe standing up a little straighter. Not not quite as much. He was more concerned with his hands uh, around the cage, especially in batting practice. They work on that quickness of hands instead of dragging the bat through quite as much. One ball, one strike. Two on, two out. Now he steps away. Moreno and Foley are the base runners. There's the Omar. He, <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I guess when he's on, that pitcher's thinking about him all the time. Stan Bonson, who had to leave the second game last night, there was some kind of an injury. It obviously wasn't serious. They've got him throwing in the bullpen already. Boy, good stop of that ball. By, oh, brother. Talk about Carter being an aggressive catcher. He threw that kneeling, didn't he? And after he did, he was shaking his head. He said, whoops, I shouldn't have done that. He said, I got carried away there a little bit. But he almost got the ball away to second base, throwing on his knees. Now, if that ball jumps a little, Inspire was a little late coming over to get it. Moreno might have come around. He would have gambled. Two balls, one strike. Pirates leading three to nothing. We're in the second inning. Another ball right down into the dirt. Carter really has excellent hands, doesn't he? Well, he does. He's improved so much behind the plate. That used to be the bad rap on him. It was, you know, good hit and poor feel behind the plate. But uh, for a, such a big man, he shifts very well. He blocks very well. And, of course, he's got a rifle for an arm. All right, now, this is a pitch that the Cobra can really be guessing on. Moreno second, Foley first, two away. The 3-1 pitch. Well, he took it. That's the third walk of the inning, and that's going to load him up for Bill Robinson, and Dick Williams, the manager, is on his way. Carter's going to be out there to kind of be the buffer, but... Dick Williams is walking very slowly. The bases are loaded. A run is in. The Pirates are leading three to nothing. And Bill Robinson, the batter. Now, with that young left-hander out on the mound, let's see if he decides to go to Bonson. Bonson, who had some good years with the Yankees and with the White Sox. You know, nothing gives a uh, manager more gray hair than a pitcher who's not throwing the ball over the plate. There's nothing uh, nothing anybody can do to help you, and I'm sure he's out there trying to find out from Chasseter. He said, is, is there something wrong? You aren't throwing well? What is it? You tell me, and then I'll tell you whether I'm going to leave you in or not. He's giving him a pretty good pep talk and a going over right now, saying if you want to stay in a ball game, now show me something. I think he's really trying to pump him up right now, get him to challenge the hitters. All right, he's leaving him in, and he's a lefty, as you well know, watching this game so far. And Bill Robinson, a right-hand power hitter and our leading home run man. If Robinson can do the job here, folks, now you got a chance to bust it open early. It's three to nothing at the moment. There's no place to put this guy. If you walk him, he just give us another one. Locks that one in the dirt. Carter's been all over the place, and we're only in the second inning. 
Now the Cubs this afternoon, the team we were tied with for second, lost at New York to the Mets. So the Bucks, if they keep on driving here against Schatzeter and the Expos, can be at the top when Sunday morning comes. That's high inside. Carter had to jump up to get that ball. He did. Schatzeter is really struggling right now. He can't get the breaking ball over, and right now he's trying to spot that fastball, and he's in a situation where he can't spot anything. He has to rear back and let her go, challenge somebody one-on-one. 2-0. -on -one. A high fly ball down the left side over near the bullpen. Cromartie's there. And the side has been retired. He threw a lot of pitches in the inning. He was lucky to get out of it with only one run scoring. The one run coming on just the one hit. Foley's RBI single. There were three walks in the inning. There weren't any errors. The Pirates strand three. We played an inning and a half. Pirates three. Expos nothing. Now the trick is in just three moves to get the light bottle caps all together moving two each time. Once, twice, three. What? That's easy. Hey, I can I put can away a lot of beer, beer by the time they figure I this one out. That's why I'm drinking light beer for most. Not only does light taste great, but it's got a third less calories than their regular beer. And it's less filling. Hey, what's going on here? Okay, once more. One, two, three. What? That's easy. Hey. Let me in light now. beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Elvis Jr. comes to me, says, Dad, all we need is an amp and we can play the Starlight. Well, now, I still have a school to pay for, but, uh, you know, when opportunity knocks, I went to HFC, took out a loan, got him the amp. Smart, today he's putting himself through school. And the money I was putting away, well, Judy and I were putting up an eight frame down in the lake. Gotta get away from that noise. Hello, fans. It's Saturday, and long-distance rates are 60% lower. Why not call someone special now? A bench that has thoughts about celebrating for first place, and they're pulling for the guys that are playing in the game right now. You can rest assured of that. We mentioned that the Mets beat the Cubs 6-4. to four. Kingman hit three. Sternsman and Mazzilli homered for the Mets. Cincinnati outlasted the Braves 8 to 6. Gary Matthews hit a pair. Royster hit one. Hume, who saved one against us for the Reds the other night at Three Rivers, saved one for Bonham today. The second game, well, Atlanta's got it all their own way. They're leading 8 to nothing after five innings. And Bibby working here on Tony Perez, and that's a foul strike. Pastore, Sarmiento, Tomlin have worked for Cincy. Mailer and McLaughlin have worked for Atlanta. McLaughlin has just come in in the sixth inning. Bouncer right back to the mound. Bibbs knocked it down, had a little trouble, but then fires on to Bill Robinson. Almost looked like he threw Robbie a changeup. Boy, I, I tell you, when you're on that mound and a ball comes back to you and you knock it down, your, your first instinct is to find it, get it, jump on it, do anything, beat it down. And we're going to see Jim does the same thing, a little disco step here. You really start searching for it, really looking for it, and then get a handle. The most important thing right here is to make sure when you reach down to pick up that ball, pick it up the first time. Don't have to go back the second and third time. And once you have it, then you can go ahead and make the play. Perez came in hitting 279. Now it's Carter, the catcher. He was 0 for 4, catching in the first game last night. 276 average, 15 homers, 49 ribbies. He had to back away, and the ball was up and in. It hit his bat and cracked it wide open, and a slow roller goes to Madlock, and it's two away. Sometimes you get the bounce, that's all. So Bibby now's retired five in a row. St. Louis at Philadelphia, Fulgham against Knowles, and it's two to one after an inning in favor of the Cardinals. This is Valentine getting another little reaction from the crowd for his lackluster chase after the foul ball down past the bullpen earlier in the game. I wouldn't have minded if they hadn't done that again. I don't want them to wake him up. Four for eight in the series. Hitting 279, 14 homers, 53 runs batted in. Third in homers and second in RBIs on this club. Oh, even when he doesn't hit the strike zone, he is pumping it up there. Oakland uh, edge Seattle 6 to 5. Detroit and Toronto tonight scoreless after two and a half. 
That gets us up to date. And right here, the Bucks are leading three to nothing at Montreal. High fly ball, shallow right. Geiner out, but it's Parker's play to make. He just kind of came in five or six steps. And it's three up and three down for the second inning in a row for Jim Bibby. We've played through two. So far, the Bucks are on track. It's the Pirates three and Montreal nothing. Today you bring in home your new baby and your wife and gather round the people who mean so much in your life. Come on, come on and taste the Pepsi way. Come on, come on, come on and have a Wherever you find America's best beef, that's where you'll find Giant Eagles Meat Buyer. We're looking far and wide for value that keeps you so satisfied. He makes sure only the best beef makes it to your table and his. Giant Eagle bringing all the best to you. Under our contractual arrangements with the Pirates for this telecast, the announcers for this game have been selected by station KDKE-TV, subject to the approval of the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club. As your Buckos bat in the top of the third at Montreal, it's another Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning, and this is it for Mrs. Marion Atkins of Baden. Yes, Marion, if a Bucko hits a home run in this inning, in the top of the third, you're going to win $500 worth of Giant Eagle groceries, and Lee Lacey is a candidate for that. There's a smash off the back of the glove, but Perry stays with it, and it's safe at first. That's why you run them out, folks. That's why you hustle down that line. You never know. Don't ever take anything for granted on that ball field, and Lee Lacey shows that, uh, by golly, I'm a pro, and I am going to hustle, and he just beat himself out of base hit. We're going to get a take a look at it, the ball was hit hard, and Lacey sees that Parrish is probably going to come up with it, but still he's hustling down, down that line. We see Parrish bobble it momentarily, comes up with that rifle arm of his on a good throw, but yes, sir, tie goes to the runner. Lacey's on first base. All right, got something started again. Bill Madlock is the batter, as you see Lacey leading off at first. Madlock popped up to the first baseman in the opening inning. High fly ball. Right center. Andre Dawson waiting. And it's one away. Lee Lacey credited with a hit. One of those too hot to handle jabs. And it really was hit, as Nellie pointed out when it left the bat. It really handcuffed Parrish a little bit. Didn't hit in the pocket for him and rolled behind him. Give Parrish credit, too. He stayed with the ball, tried to make up the good play, but. Lee Lacey's determination to get to first base spelled the difference on that particular play. And you only got to hesitate a second thinking, oh, heck, I'm going to be out. And then, but he didn't. He was right out of the chute, and that's Garner looking at a ball, and it's 1-0. and oh. Garner lying to right in the second inning. He's batting now with Lacey at first and one away. The Bucks are batting into third. Scrap iron's batting for Mrs. Marion Atkins in Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. Chases Lacey back, but not close as you saw it. Play Garner straight away in center. And the outfielders are pretty much straight away, both in left and in right. They've given him both of the alleys. Throw to first, zips it over a little harder, but same result. Lacey back in time. One ball, no strikes. We've out hit him five to nothing, leading the score three to nothing. There have been no errors in the early going. Shots at her and Bibby, the opposing pitchers. Foul back this way. Carter back. He's in front of the screen. He'll make the play. And it's two down. So Gary Carter comes back with a pop up off Garner's bat and brings up catcher Steve Nicosia, who walked after one out in the second and scored on a Tim Foley single. That up the ante to three to nothing. Nicosia with one home run against this club. Hit it off Grimsley in Pittsburgh in the second game of the season. Helped us win that game 7-6. to six. 
Steve has three homers for the year and number four would make Marion Atkins mighty happy. Strike call. Five hundred dollars worth of giant eagle groceries for Mrs. Atkins. If Nicosia would pound one out of here. Chats are there looking at first checking Lacey. Fouled over to the right side. Steve doesn't mind that low ball. No, he doesn't. He's very aggressive at the plate. And uh, I asked him, because I don't know him all that well, what he tried to do at the plate. And he said, mainly right now, because I don't play every day, I try to concentrate on seeing the ball and then trying to hit it where it's pitched rather than sit on any one specific pitch. He's in a hole 0 and 2 right now. And that crowds him, makes it 1 and 2. And with all the right handers we've been seeing Ott's been doing the bulk of the catching but of course with the double headers mounting up it didn't matter whether it was lefty or righty Steve catching more now since the all star break one two pitch two and two and those last two pitches have been the same kind of pitches that have put Schatzeter in a real frustrated shape of um, thinking because they have just been close enough now if you're doing something where you're missing by a foot or two or you're up or down or all over the place maybe well maybe you're standing wrong doing kicking too high or whatever there is a ball smothered by Spire throw to first base and he got him there is a big league play by their shortstop Chris Spire and he gets the good round of applause and well he should well no home run was hit during this giant eagle sweepstakes inning but no one ever loses here our contestant Mrs. Marion Atkins will receive a certificate for 10 tasty cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at your grocer. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning tonight will be worth $600. So the good play by Spire robs Nicosia of a hit. We settle for no runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. Lacey had the hit. We played two and a half. Buckos three, Expos nothing. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. We've been comparing the AMC Spirit and the Chevette on TV a lot recently and telling you that for only $5 more, the Spirit is longer and wider than the Chevette. Know what else? The Spirit's gas tank holds eight and a half gallons more than Chevette's. Think about that this weekend. And at no extra cost, you get AMC's exclusive full three-year no-rust-through warranty. The Spirit from American Motors. The difference in list price is only $5. The difference in value is enormous. Got some more folks that are Bucko fans in Montreal, Mr. and Mrs. Gerard A. Carosi from Warren, Ohio, and some of their relatives watching in Newcastle. Nally, we're going to take a look at a really great play by Spire. Look where he goes and what he does with it. Well, we talked earlier of desire or lack of it. We're going to show you what a major league player is supposed to do. There's an all-out effort on the part of Chris Spire. Goes way over in the hole, dives, gets the ball, comes up instinctively, finds the first baseman and makes one heck of a throw. Tremendous play. All right, now here is Larry Parrish, their third baseman, leading it off in the third. And we're going to contrast what you saw last night for nine innings from Blylevin with what Bibby's doing early here tonight. Well, last night, Bert Blylevin wanted to get these hitters out with his breaking stuff and keep them honest with his fastball. Tonight, Bibby told me that he was going to get them out with his fastball, keep them honest with his breaking ball. So he's going to move his fastball in and out and then bust them off with a curveball as he just did there to Parrish. And Parrish popping to his counterpart, Bill Medlock. So it's one away. Terry Miller, Denny Hunter, Greg DeSaney up from Youngstown, Ohio with a big sign that says Go Bucks. Well, here's Spire, and he gets another hand, and well, he should. Spire comes in with a batting average of 229. Played in the second game last night, the first time he'd been in for a while, and 0 for 3. But boy, you talk about a guy charged 
You just don't make that kind of a play unless you are busting a gut, and boy, he did. When those plays are made against you, sure, they hurt you, but you've also got to appreciate that kind of an effort. That's what this game's all about. Checked it, and it's ball two. Nobody on, one away. Spire the batter. Pitcher Dan Schatzeter is on deck. And there's a good look at the big guy. The 2 0. Oh, he came back with a popper again, and it's 2 and 1. The Callops are up seeing the whole weekend from North Huntington. Ron, Melanie, Ron, and Tom. And Oh, they're all down around the dugout before the game. Looking at their bucks on the road. Hmm, boy, was that close. Three balls and a strike. Spire taking a look at his third base coach, Ozzie Virgil. Felipe Alou is their coach over at first. Spire is played as slightly an off-field hitter by both Moreno and Parker. Three balls and one strike. Bibby working. He's leading three to nothing. Oh, he got that one in. Just said, well, I'm behind on the count. I've been throwing that good heater. I'm going to bust it in there again. He took it for a strike, and it's a full count. I would expect Milo. He'll come right back with the same pitch. He's going to try and let one of his players help him. Yep. Bullseye over the outside corner. What a pitch. That's his third strikeout. He's retired eight in a row. Now we're going to get a bibby reaction, Nelly. When you get the great call, see the difference. Yes, sir. You can see the intense concentration of his eyes staying right on that target all the way through with a good hummer on the outside part of the plate. Jim says, yeah, all right. Take that. Gotcha. Don't take any more of those the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> he is an awesome looking guy, isn't he? Boy, is he big. Yeah, right down the middle. Let's see what Schatzeter does with his bat normally. Well, he's had six hits. One of them a homer. Six RBIs. First time he's batted against a pirate pitcher this year. We're in the third inning, leading three to nothing. Oh, and two. Well, when you got his size and his stuff, there's no sense changing your style right here. You're early. He's he looks like he just feels strong as a bull out there tonight, and he's just letting it all hang out. Fouled off. Oh, and two. He struck out three the first time through the order here. And he's working on his mound opponent, Dan Schatzeter. He's out in front of the count. No balls and two strikes. All right, let's see if he's got him measured to end this thing. Oh, fouled it off. Didn't slow up in him, though, did he? He just ran it in with a lot of hard stuff on it. He was trying to make a good pitch right in on his fist, and uh, Schatzeter did a pretty good job of fouling that ball off. You know, that doubleheader win last night was only the 11th and 12th times that this ball club has been defeated in this ballpark at home. That really adds to the significance of that doubleheader win last night. And in front of almost 60,000 paid. Let's see what he'll do with that tailing fastball, Bibby says. Well, he didn't chase it, so he took it, and it's one ball and two strikes. Nobody on in front of him, two away. Checked it and popped it left side. Could be playable. Look at our guys all hustling over there. And look at Lacey right up in next to the stands. See the difference? And made the play and came a long way to get it. Good play. Three up and three down, third inning in a row. We played three. Pirates three. Montreal nothing. Fred, how's the new father? How about a peek? Wow. A boy. And another boy. Red. You're gonna need help. <laughs> Why don't you talk to my bank? Mellon Bank. About a home improvement loan. They make more than any bank in town. Fast, too. 24 hours. I mean, let's face it, you need a new addition. But, uh oh, to the house, Red. Making home improvement loans. This is Mellon Banking. How about Red Lobster for lunch? Come wake up your taste for seafood in the middle of the day. Enjoy lunch at Red Lobster. We'll serve you right away. This isn't the old burgers and fries routine, uh-uh. Red Lobster's serving scampi, flounder, 
salads, lots of lunches far from routine. Everything we do is for the seafood lover in you. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. The next three innings are sponsored in part by Daily Juice Products, sponsor of Daily's Favorite Pirate Contest. Be sure to vote in the Daily's Favorite Pirate Contest. And in part by Tasty Cake. Cakes, pies, and cookies, all the good things wrapped up in one. Well, it says on the marquee outside the ballpark that championship season. It's a battle for first place. Along with Milo Hamilton and Nellie Bryles, this is Lanny for Terry. And ever since the curtain has gone up on this ball game tonight, the Pirates have had the lead. As a matter of fact, Jim Bibby, as he's gone the first time through the cast of characters for the Expos, he set them down nine in a row. Nellie Bryles. He's got good stuff tonight, Jim does. He's challenging the hitters, using his fastball, moving it in and out. I look for a good, strong game, and being that we jumped out in the lead, it means that uh, they have to play catch-up ball with us, and we can play all-out aggressive baseball. Pirates three runs on five hits, no errors. No runs, no hits, and no errors for Montreal. Pitcher Jim Bibby is leading off the top of the fourth inning. 3-0 Pirate lead against Dan Schatzeter. Bibby struck out of the second. One ball and one strike. Line on Schatzeter thus far. In three innings, he has given up the five hits, three walks, one strikeout. Bibby fouls it off to the right out of play, and it's two and two. Expos this year have been involved in a few crucial tests. Early in the season, they had a, a couple of back-to-back -back series against Philadelphia, and they just knocked the Phillies to pieces. This is a little bit different story now. You're turning into the second half of the season. There's a called third strike. And Schatzeter gets his second strikeout. Nelly, when do the quote unquote dog days of a baseball season really start? Are we in them now? No, not yet. Not yet. You're just after the All Star break. This is just the 100th game of the season. Your dog days are usually, well, you really don't have any when it comes down to a championship season. But if you're in the second division, you're talking about the last week in August and all through September if you're out of contention. Omar one for one in the ball game. Singleton was aboard when Parker hit the home run in the first inning, and then Moreno walked on five pitchers in the second. Three nothing Pirates lead. We're in the fourth. I guess when you get into late July early August that is the time that usually you separate the contenders from the pretenders well it is with the exception of this year by golly we've got uh, as Omar strikes out on a pretty good pitch we've got five teams that are only separated by six ball games so the dog days I think aren't going to be around for these uh, top five clubs in our division so with two down it'll bring up the shortstop Tim Foley Tim had an RBI single in the second one for two in the ball game. 3-0 Pirates lead. Bucks got two runs in the first and one in the second. No doubt about the importance of this ball game and what it's all about. It's a battle for first place. The Expos have occupied the top rung in the National League Eastern Division for 45 consecutive days. Missed with a 3 and 0. Oh. Well, then they've had it long enough. About time that uh, we took over for how about another 45, 50 days? Well, I hope the Expos haven't gotten too comfortable there. They're feeling the heat now. Pirates, Cubs, Phillies. Bucks a half game out. There's a strike. Cubs losing this afternoon. They have fallen at this point a game back.
Foley with a shot to left center and Andre Dawson chases it down. So the fourth inning the Pirates are retired in order a couple of strikeouts and the fly ball to Dawson in left center after three and a half innings of play from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The battle for first place continues and the Bucks have a three nothing lead over the Expos. You know, a lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? Yeah, you betcha, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is, it tastes so great. No, George, the best thing is less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy? Yeah, George. You're hired. Not again. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Did I say hired? We're on? Okay, we're back. Look, I don't care what you say, everything ages. But Armor All Protected helps slow down that aging. But how does it work? Look inside that car. The dashboard, seats, door panels. One half is faded with age. Well, it looks old, so? We sprayed the other half with Armor All Protectant. See, the color's back, it feels soft, looks fresh, doesn't look its age. Gee, that's how I'd like to look. That might take another <laughs> scientific achievement. We'll be back. You can get Armor All Protectant at your favorite automotive or drugstore. Hello, fans. It's Saturday, and long-distance rates are 60% lower. Why not call someone special now? On Wednesday and Thursday, August 1st, 2nd, the St. Louis Cardinals with Lou Brock will invade Three River Stadium. Hey, so don't miss any of that action. As a matter of fact, in Major League Baseball, there are two guys that are closing in on the 3,000-hit plateau of their careers. Lou Brock is one. He'll be in. If you'd like more information on the Cardinal Series and the upcoming homestand, we invite you to call our ticket office at 323-1150. Jim Bibby has retired the first nine Expo hitters. Has three strikeouts in the first three innings. Jim six and two on the year. He is three and one as a starter. Bibby's earned run average as a starter this year is 2.79. Here's Cromarty struck out on a fastball up in the first inning. Moreno takes care of the fly ball in left center one away. All right, Nellie Browns, we've talked about this uh, championship season. When it comes down to those uh, final months of the year, what would separate the clubs that are really going to contend? Is it is it pitching, as everybody says? It really is. Two ingredients, pitching and defense. If you don't have the pitching, then most of the time your team is going to fall by the wayside. And both these managers, Dick Williams and Chuck Tanner, have said that, has said that the team that has the best pitching down the stretch is going to win this thing. Rodney Scott takes down low ball one. And of course, it's a little bit different. You look at the pitching staffs on paper a little different, though, because you don't know about the intangibles, namely injuries and how pitchers might go on particular streaks at any point. There's a strike. You also have to look at the flexibility of the pitching staffs. For instance, the pirate pitching uh, yeah. staff, we have uh, six or seven guys and go out there and start for you. Other staffs do not. For instance, uh, the staff here with the Expos don't have that kind of flexibility. They have only used one extra player outside of the 25 man roster so far this year and have stayed mainly with the eight guys on the field day in and day out and I think that's going to tell on them down the stretch. They're trying to do something uh, that they had not done in Chicago for example before it looks like Herman Franks is trying to platoon a few guys to try to keep his Cub ball club fresh and rested. Three and one on Scott one out fourth inning Pirates lead three to nothing. When I talked with uh, first base coach Cookie Rojas with the Cubs here a couple of weeks ago, he said at that time that pitching was a concern of the Cubs, and they are definitely in the market for maybe one more guy in the bullpen and definitely a starter for them. The Cubs are a good example of how one pitcher has made a difference for them. Dick Tidrow coming over has been a big plus for their ball club. He's taken a lot of pressure off Bruce Suter, their number one reliever, and uh, been able to come in early, middle, and late in the game and uh, keep them close. Nobody on with one out. Bibby with a payoff pitch due to Rodney Scott. Moreno in left center field. And Omar is taking care of the first two outs. Bibby has retired the first 11 Expos that he's faced. Jim Bibby has won three in a row. Numbers very impressive for Jim in his last three starts. 22 in the third innings. 
Now counting the uh, three and two thirds he's worked tonight he has worked uh, in his last three and three plus starts he's worked 26 innings and given up only seven earned runs. Here's Andre Dawson he popped up in the first inning. Pirates got two runs in the first inning on Dave Parker's 17th home run of the year. Then Foley with an RBI single to drive in Nikosia in the second. Backs him off the plate ball one. One ball and one strike. Well, you know Jim is throwing well. You haven't seen very many of their hitters get around aggressively on a fastball yet. They've all been foul balls off off to the opposite side. And Jim throwing strikes. He was three and two on Spire in the third. Got him on a called third strike, and he was three and one on Rodney Scott, but got Scott on a three-two pitch to hit the fly ball to center. Two and one. Tonight is a little bit cooler, so I predict tonight is only going to be a two-cap night for Jim <laughs> Bibby and probably only about four sweatshirts. Well, he really can go through them. Remember in Atlanta when he went through uh, three full hats and went through about six sweatshirts in seven innings? Yeah. It's a good thing he's not superstitious about a particular cap or a particular sweatshirt. Now he's behind uh, Dawson three and one. Never any doubt when Jim Bibby goes to the mound, he puts in a full day's work. Three and one. Foul ball. So the count is full. Got a little break there, but I'll tell you, when you're throwing as hard as Jim Bibby is tonight, you get some of those breaks because a hitter has to commit himself a little earlier than normal. And sometimes on that check swing, you get the have to start the bat a little earlier, and boom, you get it out there and can't get it back in time. Yeah, that happened to Carter in the second when he hit that check swing ground ball to third. Now it's three and two on Dawson. Nobody on, two down. Pirates leading three to nothing. Payoff pitch. Lined at second baseman Phil Garner and the Expos are retired one, two, three for the fourth straight inning. So Jim Bibby with his clan of buckos tonight enjoying a three nothing lead. Yeah. I won't tell no lie. Do it, baby. All of the people around us, they say, can they be that close? DJ and Penny present The Clown for Daly's Fresh Fruit Flavor Concentrate. Daly's Fresh Fruit Flavor Concentrate in the 104 pack gallon or the convenient 26 pack. Seven fresh fruit flavors. Daly's Fruit Flavored Concentrate. Three cents a glass and no sugar needed. We're not taking a vacation this year. I can't afford it with the kids. Besides, maybe I don't need one. United has some fantastic, fabulous flying fares. Come again. United's best summer savings ever. I'd have to save real big. Up to 40%. 50% with night coach. Yeah, how about the kids? This summer, if they're 17 or under, you can take them along for half fare. Half fare? Best summer fares ever. That's why we call them. United's fantastic, fabulous flying fares. How could I refuse? Time to root the Bucks home during this half of the fifth inning, and our contestant is Barbara DePoffey of Pittsburgh. If a home run is hit, Barbara will win $600 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. And we have Dave Parker, Bill Robinson, and Lee Lacey due up for Barbara in our jackpot inning. The Mets beat the Cubs this afternoon, 6-4 to four at Shea Stadium. Dave Kingman hit three home runs for the Cubs, third time in his career that he's done it. John Stearns and Lee Mazzilli with home runs for New York. Reds involved in a doubleheader tonight uh, this afternoon with Atlanta. Reds won the first game eight to six. Bottom over Brizolera. Gary Matthews with two home runs and a losing cause for Atlanta. Jerry Rushter with one for the Braves. And Atlanta leading in the nightcap eight to one in the seventh inning. Bob Horner has hit his 19th of the year in the fourth inning with one on. Parker had a two run homer in the first inning and walked on five pitches in the second.
Dave with 17 home runs. Bouncer Spire handcuffed him and Parker's on. Scored as an error on the shortstop Chris Spire. Looked like that ball surprised him a bit. Handcuffed him. Well, I think it had a funny spin off the bat, and then when it hit the turf, we're going to see right there. It hit right on the corner where the turf missed the green, meets, meets the ground, and it reversed the spin on Spire, and he wasn't able to handle it cleanly. And due to the hustle, as we emphasize so much tonight, of Davey Parker, he was able to get on base. If he is not hustling down the line from the very beginning, Spire can still make a play on him. Bill Robinson steps in. He's 0 for 2 and batting for Barbara DuPoffey of Pittsburgh. In our jackpot inning, $600 on the line. Pirates leading three to nothing in this battle for first place with the Montreal Expos. Two and zero. Oh. Boy, it sure doesn't cost you a dime to hustle in this game, and it can prove so beneficial to you. Force mistakes and make breaks too. Down low, 3 0. Oh. Cardinals leading the Phillies tonight, 3 to 1 after 4. John Fulgham against Dickie Knowles. Dodgers have failed to score in the top of the first against Houston. Jerry Royce against Ken Forge. And San Francisco's at San Diego in a later start. And the strike 3 and 1. The Dodgers uh, apparently trying to make a strong comeback. They. Uh, have taken the first two games of that series from the Houston Astros. Well, there's still quite a few games under 500, and you really can't make any type of move until you get over the 500 mark. There's still 13 games out. Seem to be putting things together now, but uh, they've got a long road to hoe, and they're going to need some help from those in front of them. Shot inside the third base bag and a roll down in the left field foul area. Parker will make the turn at first at second base and hold on. And Bill Robinson has delivered with a single. And he's hit number six for the Pirates. The Bucks have two on with nobody out. Leading by a score of three to nothing. Bullpen working for the Expos. Dan Schatzeter, who started the game, will get another visit from the pitching coach of the Montreal Expos, Jim Brewer. Stan Bonson, who was up earlier, is up once again. Right now I think they're out there giving Bonson a little bit of time to warm up. I don't think he's quite ready to come into the ball game and they're doing a little delaying tactics here. The pitcher doesn't come up. I think he's a sixth hitter next inning and they need to give Bonson a little time and also to check out and see what's happening with uh, Shasseter as we see Robinson on first and Parker on second. You know with that base hit down the line maybe some of our viewers wondered why in the world could Parker go to third base on a ball that's hit right down the line and the reason is that the left fielder Warren Cromartie was playing Robinson to pull and was already over in that area and with good hustle was able to get the ball back in. Parker didn't have a chance at third. Conference breaks up on the mound. Lee Lacey now batting for Barbara DePoffey of Pittsburgh. Three. Six hundred dollars in the jackpot. Lacey. Is two for two. He doubled the first inning had an infield single in the third. Lee Lacey batting in the number five spot and playing left field and now Lee's going to check in again with the uh, third base coach Joe Lynette. They might have changed uh, some of the strategy right here. They gave Lee one pitch to swing. Maybe now they're going to switch off to the bunt. Th these runs are very important. We can put the game not completely out of reach but we can sure make make it difficult for them to hit and run and, and do the things you can do when the game is a little closer. So it'll be interesting to see what manager Chuck Tanner is going to do in this situation whether he will now switch to the bunt or go ahead and give Lee Lacey a shot to get the runners over and maybe possibly get a hit for himself. Takes high one and one. Parker reached on an error charge to Chris Spire. Then Bill Robinson single down the left field line. So Parker and Robinson are the running mates with nobody out. Top of the fifth inning. And 
popped up. That will be an infield play. Rule prevails, and Perez makes the catch. Lacey is out one away. Parker remains at second, Bill Robinson at first. Three nothing Pirates lead against the Expos and Dan Schatzeter. We're in our jackpot inning and Bill Madlock will be batting for Barbara DePoffey of Pittsburgh six hundred dollars on the line. Bill Madlock is 0 for 2 in the ballgame. Bill's hitting 283 on the year. Runners lead away. Fouled out of play strike one. Pirates got two runs in the first inning on Dave Parker's 17th home run of the year. Then Foley with a two out single to center drove into Kosha. So it is three nothing Pirates. This is the third game of the series. By the way this is the third straight game that the Pirates scored two runs in the first inning. One and one. Garner is on deck. Parker reached on the error. He's at second base. Bill Robinson with the single down the left field line. He's at first and one away. One one pitch. In the dirt ball skips away from Carter. Parker will move to third. And Robinson down to second. Good shot of it there from our center field camera on the wild pitch. Dave moves up on the front door. And Bill Robinson down to second base. Well, here's the pitch. It's way down in front of the plate. The ball bounces up. Carter really didn't have a chance to get his body in front of it and turn his shoulders to knock the ball down in front. The ball goes all the way back to the screen. Parker and Robinson move up very alertly. Carter gets the ball back into the pitcher who was covering home plate, but by golly, if Lacey didn't get the job done one way or another. Thank you, Shasseter. Two and one on Bill Madlock with runners at second and third. Let's see how the Expos play their infield now. They're down three to nothing. They have uh, drawn the infield in. They can't afford right here to give up any more runs. They have to come in. Live ball to deep left. Crow Marty going back, edge of the track. He'll make the grab. Parker will tag, and it is four nothing Pittsburgh. Bill Madlock with a sacrifice fly. Driving in Dave Parker. Madlock gets his 52nd RBI of the year. Madlock driving in Parker, 4 0 Bucks. Robinson remaining at second base, two away. And the batter will be second baseman Phil Garner batting for Barbara DePoffy of Pittsburgh. $600 in the jackpot. Garner is 0 for 2. Phil's had 11 hits in his last 21 at bats. And he is seventh in the National League in hitting. 313 batting average. Two down, runner at second, 4 0 Pirates. Pitch is popped in foul territory. Carter calling for it. He has it. So no home run during our Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but for our contestant, Barbara DePuffy. We'd like Barbara to have a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake Family Packs and an assortment of Daily Juice products available at your grocer. Our next Giant Eagle Sweepstakes inning will be worth $700. Parker scores run number four as the Bucks get the one run on one hit and take advantage of an Expo error. It's a battle for first place from Montreal. And midway through, the Buccos lead 4-0. We're coming right back. And now here is a tasty break from Tasty Cake. Tasty cake is a day in spring, a brand new love or a golden ring. Tasty cake is the morning sun, it's all the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty cake has delivered the same kind of quality for over 60 years. Delicious tasting cake made with the goodness of milk, butter, and eggs, brought fresh from the bakery to you. Tasty cake is a world of fun, it's all the good things wrapped up in one. A few years ago, this town didn't have a Leone car wash. And Mr. Jensen, he had a camper so old it wasn't worth washing. Of course, there was no Finance America here then. When we came to town, folks came to us. They heard Finance America invests in people. Looks like our investments paid off. For the Leones, for the Jensens, and for us. 
Because we do well with our money when you do well with our money. Finance America. We invest in you. We're getting ready for the bottom of the fifth inning from Olympic Stadium. A lot of Pirate fans on hand, and there are four uh, particular Pirate fans sitting behind the dugout. Harold Bowers, H.L. McCloy, uh, Pirate Vice President in charge of public relations and marketing. Jack Strum is the gentleman with his uh, fist up under his chin. And the gentleman uh, next to Jack Strum on Jack's left is uh, Bruce Keeson's father-in-law, Mr. Stephen Orlando. Mr. Orlando in the blue sweater as he sits behind the dugout. He is with Bruce on this trip. The Pirates leading four to nothing. Quite a story going on here for Mr. Jim Bibby. He has handcuffed the Expo through the first four and retired the first 12 Montreal batters. And Tony Perez will lead off in the fifth. Four nothing Bucks. Perez is 0 for 1. It had come back to the mound on the second. A 5 ball 1. Jim Bibby, father of two. He and his wife Jackie have two daughters. Down low, two balls, no strikes. Jim with three strikeouts in the first four innings. And a base hit. That is the first hit of the game for the Expos. Perez is on. Pirates lead four to nothing. Why do you have to do that? What kind of guy is Tony Perez to do that to Jim Bibby? That was one of the few times in the game that Jim had fallen behind in the count. And I guess if you're going to have a guy do it to you, it's not surprising that it's a guy of the caliber of Tony Perez. Well, that's right. And with a four-run lead, you certainly don't want to be walking guys, especially to start the inning. And uh, Jim had to come in with a pitch, and Tony was waiting for it. Gary Carter stepping in. He's 0 for 1, bounced to third in the second. Carter hitting 275 on the year. Pirates four, Expos nothing. Cubs lost to the Mets this afternoon, 6 to 4. Dave Kingman hit three home runs this afternoon. Three blasts at Shea Stadium. Third time that Kingman has done it in his career. Now you might think to yourself, that's quite a feat. And indeed it is. Interestingly enough, though, the former pirate Ralph Kiner did it four times. And Willie Stargell has done it four times in his career. That is three home runs in a single game. Foul back. Now, I was looking back through the book, Nelly. Stargell did it twice in the span of 10 days back in 1971. He did it against the Atlanta Braves at Atlanta Stadium on April the 10th in 71, came back 11 days later and hit three home runs in a single game against the Braves at Three Rivers. Perez on. I can remember he, him hitting one in the upper deck for me to win a ball game against Atlanta. What a pleasure it was to watch Willie playing day after day. They hit to left. Perez will stop at second. And Carter at first. So the Expos, who have been silenced so far tonight, come up with back-to-back -back base hits here in the fifth inning against Jim Bibby. You know, for Dave Kingman, that's no, not only his third today, but that is five in less than 15 hours. He hit two yesterday. By the way, that ties a National League record. Five home runs in two consecutive days. That's been done a number of times. Ralph Kiner did it twice in 1947. Five home runs in back-to-back -back ball games. Valentine stepping in. He's 0 for 1. Fly to right field in the second. the middle Foley steps on second for one fires the first Robinson with a stretch to complete the double play Carter erased at second base Perez moves over to third on the double play 
Well, Valentine goes off after a pitch. There was a pitcher's pitch, a good slider down and away. Hits it more or less off the end of the bat to Foley. We tag second for one, over to first for two. That's just what the doctor ordered. So the Pirates leading four to nothing, and the batter will be third baseman Larry Parrish. Pirates coming into the ball game have won 11 of their last 15, 27 of their last 42, and leading the Expos four to nothing. Parrish popped to third his first time up. This head-to-head -head confrontation here between the Pirates and Expos merely as an appetizer to what will happen at Three Rivers Stadium. A week-long homestand that starts on Monday. Then next weekend, the head-on clash with the Philadelphia Phillies. Right here, Jim Bibby doesn't really want to groove a pitch to this fella. He can knock it out of the ballpark. He still wants to try and have an idea, try and throw the ball on the outside part of the plate, make him try and get a uh, hitter to one of our guys. Yeah, all right. Two and one. Let's see if we can't think along with Jim Bibby. That 2 and 0 pitch. Throw a breaking ball. He was thinking uh, the way we were at that time that he doesn't want to give in to this fella. He can cut the, the lead in half right here with just one swing. You have two out. Chris Byers, the uh, hitter behind him, doesn't have all that much power. It can hit the ball out of the ballpark, but uh, he doesn't want to give this guy a fat pitch to hit. Two and one on Parrish. Fastball up and away, three and one. And Jim upset with himself. Tony Perez at third base, two outs in the inning. Nikosha dropping the fingers and Bibby's pitch. Oh, fastball in. It's a full count. Perez led off the inning with a base hit to left, the first Montreal hit of the game, then Carter singled. But Valentine bounced into a double play erasing Gary Carter and Ellis Valentine and Perez moved to third on the double play. Now it is three and two on Parrish. Mm. Ah, stop the plate. That is the first walk issued by Jim Bibby. The Expos have runners at the corners. Spire is due up. But it'll be Rusty Staub. Rusty Staub. Returned to Montreal last night. Their crowd of 59,260 gave him a standing ovation. And Staub is batting for Spire again tonight. Hitting 236 in the American League before coming over from Detroit. Expos have runners at first and third and two outs. Foul back, strike one. Pirates are leading four to nothing as Montreal bats in the bottom of the fifth. With this move, it looks like uh, Jim Mason warming up in a bullpen. He'll probably go in the game at shortstop. And the pitcher Dan Schatzeter is due up next. He is in the on-deck circle. Perez at third, Parrish at first. Strike two. Guarantee you, Shasseter will not hit if they get to it this <laughs> inning. Perez and Parrish are the running mates. They're on opposite corners. Nikosha had to talk to Bibby before this next 0 2 pitch.
Rusty, very knowledgeable hitter. He knows the pitchers. He knows what they're trying to do with him. Right now, he's going to sacrifice himself a little bit. Now he's going to go for the base hit. He will not try to swing for a home run. As Staub waits on Bibby, the concentration level is quite obviously high. Struck him out. Good pitch, good location by Jim Bibby. So, Bibby gets his fourth strikeout after five innings of play after the Expos are held scoreless in inning number five. The Pirates lead the Expos by a score of four to nothing. They built this country out of dreams and steel. And the work never ends. So every day you pour enough new steel for one more bridge. One more building. One more dream. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer. Miller beer. The Phillies are back, and the call is out for Pirate fans to turn out in force to support the Battling Bucks. Yes, sir, and that's going to be on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Three Rivers. So call 323-1150 for all those ticket information. We've got uh, the doubleheader with Mott with uh, Philadelphia on uh, Friday night of next week, then a single game Saturday, doubleheader next Sunday. Jimmy Mason is the new shortstop for the Expos. Staub had been a pinch hitter for Spire. Dan Schatzeter. Staying on to pitch the sixth inning. Mason will take Staub's spot in the batting order. Pirates leading four to nothing in this battle for first place. Start of the day, the Cubs and Pirates were half game out. The Cubs lost to the Mets this afternoon. Steve Nikosha leading off the sixth. Steve walked and scored a third run in the second. Then Spire made a an outstanding play deep in the hole in the third inning to retire Steve Nikosha. Getting 250 on the year. Pirates with four runs on six hits. The Expos no runs on two hits. Base hit to center. Dawson will flip it back in, and Nikosha leads off the sixth inning with a single. Tony Perez will hold him on. Al Monchek, our first base coach. That's hit number seven off Dan Schatzeter. Jim Bibby stepping in. He's 0 for 2. Tell you what, between Mr. Bird Blightleff and last night and Jim Bibby tonight, not been a lot of offense out of that number nine spot. Right now, between both of them, they've got seven Ks in a row. <laughs> I think right here, Jim Bibby's going to be bunning again. Popped in the air, back out of the reach of Carter, strike one. Jim having a little problem bunting, mainly because he's not getting the, the bat out in front, and he's dipping that barrel head just a little bit. He has to extend out in front and place the bat right on the ball. After Steve Nikosha's leadoff single, Bibby looking to move him down to second base with a sacrifice. Give the top of the batting order a shot to drive him in. Bunted foul, strike two. Pirates in front, four to nothing. Here comes Perry. She's sneaking in all the time, anticipating the bunt. Trying to get right on top of him, but alertly, Bebby was trying to push it down the first baseline, which is where the bun is supposed to be placed, but uh, just didn't get the ball fair. Can that be an intimidating thing for a hitter when he sees the third baseman charging like that? Well, in this situation, you don't care if the third baseman charges or not because you're supposed to be going to first base all the way with the bunt. But there, 
Carter will take charge and flip on to second baseman Rodney Scott. The play goes 2 4. So Bibby does his job and he moves Nikosha down into scoring position on the sacrifice. Okay, here's a good shot by our director, Brian Seip. We're going to see the third baseman charge him, yet not as quickly because the count is 0 2. Bibby does a heck of a job and gets the ball down on that count. The pitcher comes by. Carter calls him off the ball and makes a throw to the inside. And I'll tell you, Jim Bibby was hustling down the line, forcing them to come out and make the play. Looked like the freight train, the friendship train going down to first base. Rodney Scott was very happy that Gary Carter gave him the throw to the inside of the first base bag. Jim Bibby has done his job here in the sixth inning and with a sacrifice has moved the runner into scoring position one away Pirates leading four to nothing Omar Moreno one for two in the ball game single in the first inning and he was aboard when Dave Parker at the line drive home run that at the time put us in front two nothing we got a run in the second and a Foley single and then got to Bill Madlock with a sacrifice fly to drive in Dave Parker with our fourth run one and one Terry Taylor is the home plate umpire Base umpires are Jerry Crawford, Charlie Williams, and John Kibler. With that sacrifice, the consecutive strikeouts has been broken. All right. One and one on Omar. Brown ball into right center field. Base hit. Nikosha rounding third. Ball is bobbled by Dawson. And Moreno will move into second base. Pirates lead five to nothing. Omar Moreno will get credit for an RBI single and move into second base on the error charge to Andre Dawson. You don't think sacrifices in this game don't mean a lot? Jim Bibby doing the job, getting Nicosia over, creates a situation where we score a big run. Omar Moreno drilling the ball up the middle on the ground. On the bobble, Omar takes second base. We got a shot at an yet another run. 5 nothing Pirates lead. Moreno gets his second hit. Nikosha scores his second run. And the batter is shortstop Tim Foley. Tim is one for three. Had an RBI single in the second. Hitting 278 on the year. Second baseman Scott Damp dancing in near the second base bag to keep Moreno close. Fundamental baseball, you can't beat it. Omar at second with one away. Omar's running. Pitches a ball, the throw to third, they got it. Carter with a throw to Larry Parrish, and the caught stealing. Well, I'll tell you, I think this is a little closer than it appeared at first. Foley tried to decoy Carter just a little bit. Carter's throw is high. Omar's hand appears to be in there as, as Parrish tags him on the shoulder. I thought that he beat the play. John Kibler came to the inside of the... Uh... All right, now they put a strike up on the board. I didn't see Terry Tate's right hand go up on that pitch. Pitch is a bouncer to third. Going to be academic at this point. Parrish will fire to Perez. And the Pirates add to their lead against Dan Schatzeter. Pirates get one run on two hits, an RBI single by Omar Moreno, and then Omar was caught stealing. There was one Montreal error. The Expos have been in first place for 45 consecutive days. This one is a determining factor whether they will stay on top or not or whether Buccos will take over the top spot. After five and a half, it's Pittsburgh five and Montreal nothing. I might have died if it weren't for these ever-ready batteries with a cat on the label. A car had crashed on an old bridge. As I radioed for help, the weakened bridge collapsed. Suddenly, I was 30 feet underwater. I came up dazed and hurt. Am I glad my flashlight had ever-ready batteries? After about an hour, I was rescued. I believe in that ever-ready cat. Get ever-ready batteries in the economy pack. They'll save you money. They could save your life. Once and for all, Jeep pickup is going to show you which automatic four-wheel drive pickup has the best traction. Normal automatic? Sure. Jeep pickup challenges Ford, Chevy, and Dodge to get off the logs. Jeep Quadratrack automatic four-wheel drive sends power to the wheels that have traction. The Jeep pickup's out of trouble. The other automatic four-wheel drives... They're are... just spinning their wheels. There you go. 
Jeep Quadratrack gives the best traction in normal automatic, and that includes ice, sand, and mud of any automatic four-wheel drive pickup, period. It's a long drive going, going foul. If your transmission's gone foul after a long drive, see your local Amco dealer. How would you like to see the Pirates play the Phillies on August the 4th for free? Well, if you are 16 years of age or younger, you can. Saturday at Three River Stadium, a week from today, is Bronze Bread Day. Yes, yeah, so just bring eight bronze bread wrappers to Gate D, and the Pirates will give you a free ticket to see the Pirates-Phillies game. The Pirates urge all fans to turn out in force to help the Pirates beat the Phillies and continue their quest for the National League East Championship. That's Bronze Bread Day, Saturday, August the 4th, one week from today. And don't forget the Pirates-Phillies doubleheaders on August 3rd and 5th. This will be a crucial weekend of Pirate baseball, one weekend from this weekend. Matter of fact, the Bucks are playing three straight crucial weekends. Last weekend it was the Houston Astros in the West. This is the battle for the top rung in the Eastern Division this weekend. And then of course the set with the Philadelphia Phillies next weekend. Warren Cromarty will be following Tony Bernazard. Bernazard pinch hitting for Schatzer. So Dan Schatzer the Montreal left hander is gone. Stan Bonson will come on in the seventh. Or at least that's the way it looks though. Woody Fryman had been up and throwing a bit. See what the Expos do. Tony Bernazard, switch hitter, batting from the left side, as you see, and it's one and one. Five to nothing, Pirates lead. Swept the twin bill from the Expos last night by scores of five to four and nine to one. Moved to within a half game. Jim Bibby has held the Expos scoreless on only two hits. Jim has four strikeouts. Bernard had a notion but he laid off it's two and two. Struck him out. Bernard caught looking. That is strikeout number five for Jim Bibby. Terry Tater rings him up and Bernard makes the round trip back to the dugout. When you have two strikes on you, you can't be taking a ball that's this close. And boy, it was right on the money. Good sinker low and away. Tony was caught looking. <laughs> Questions the umpire. I think he felt after he had stopped his bat from going through that that was the only factor remaining. But Bibby got the strikeout. Nobody on one away. Five to nothing Pirates lead. We're in the last half of the sixth inning. Along with Milo Hamilton and Nellie Bryles, this is Lanny Fritzeri with you from Olympic Stadium. And we're glad to have you with us tonight. This is a big ball game for the Pirates. A pie. If you're wondering, the last time the Pirates were in first place. May 27th, 1977. That is not counting the fact that early last year we won the first two games in the year and we're in first place at that point. But going back considerable part of the season, May 27th, 1977. Moreno back at the wall. It'll be off the fence. Cromarty digging for second. And he'll be in standing with a double. That is hit number three for Montreal. This is one of the few bad pitches that uh, Jim Bibby has made today. It was just a ball that was out and over the plate. And boy, he got all of it. Nailed it all the way to the center field wall. Just a little bit more and it had gone out of here. Omar played the carom perfectly off the center field fence. Cromarty at second, one away. 5 nothing Pirates lead and Rodney Scott will be the hitter. Enrique Romo going down to the bullpen to warm up. Rennie Stennett will uh, stand by Romo to protect the Pirate relief pitcher as he loosens. Rodney Scott stepping in. Bottom of the sixth inning. Romarty at second base with one out. Ground ball. Garner at second will fire on to Bill Robinson to get Rodney Scott. 
and on the ground ball to the right side Warren Cromartie moves to third. Andre Dawson will be the hitter. He is 0 for 2. Hit a line shot at second baseman Garner in the fourth. 5 0 Pirates lead. RBIs in the game. Parker a two run homer. RBI singles for Tim Foley and Omar Moreno and a sacrifice fly for Bill Madlock. Good stop by Steve Nakosha. Ball one. Marty's at third with two away. One oh pitch to Dawson. Good pitch one and one. So far this year the last three games that Jim Bibby has, has pitched for us has been as consistent and good baseball as he has pitched in his whole career. He's had it all together for Jim Bibby throwing as hard as he does. He has still had the control to move his fastball around and then throw his breaking ball over even when he's behind and this is why Jim has been so successful as of late particularly on that uh, road trip just before the All Star break when Rooker and uh, Robinson were experiencing the injuries Bibby and Keeson came on strong for it. There's a base hit to left. That's going to cash in Cromarty to the pirate lead is now five to one two out single by Andre Dawson lining the single to left to drive in Cromarty. Well, we'll take a look at it, and the ball just stayed right up and over the plate. It was a good pitch to hit. Hit it, he did, for the single to left, driving in the first run. I don't know an awful lot about pitching, but it looked like Bibby dropped the wrist a little bit. Maybe the pitch flattened out on him. It did. The, the slider just did not finish as much as uh, you would like. The ball started to break and then just stayed right there. And Dawson went out and got it. Tanner's out to assess the situation with Jim Bibby. Nikosha and Robinson eavesdropping on the conversation. It's a 5 1 ball game, and Bibby will stay on. Chuck Tanner, skipper of the Bucks. Nice little pep talk right there. Just checking on his physical condition. How's the arm feel? Okay, you're my man. Go get him. It's kind of like an inventory. Let's find out what's left in the store. Here's Perez. He's one for two. Runner at first, two outs. Fly ball to right. Parker will track it down over near the right field line. And the Expos will have to settle for one. Montreal gets the one run on two hits. And now after six complete innings of play, as the Pirates battle the Expos for first place in the National League Eastern Division, the Bucko family has the advantage five to one. Milo will be back shortly to join you, and we'll be right back. Steve's motto is, be prepared. So, he packed for this weekend like it was the Lewis and Clark expedition. But he forgot one thing, money. Luckily, we have a neighbor who'll help us out any hour of the day or night. Our neighbor gives us cash when we need it, and even does other favors for us. Like deposit our checks. Meet our neighbor. The Mellon Banking Machine, a neighbor you can count on. Now let's find a coffee machine. I went into Wendy's for the first time. I had a hot and juicy, and I loved it. That night, I had a wonderful dream. I took hot and juicies everywhere. All I could think about was that juicy meat, those juicy toppings. So, I decided to devote myself to bringing pleasure to people, just as I have found it. You want a real good hamburger? The next three innings from Montreal are sponsored in part by Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And in part by Gulf Oil Corporation and your local golf dealer. Getting ready to go to the seventh inning, Michael Hamilton joining Nellie Bryles to take you the rest of the way. And look at that. Mm hmm. Yeah, Buck Power. And we've got a new pitcher, and Nellie's going to take a look at the credentials. 
Well, this is going to be Stan Bonson's 33rd appearance, all in relief so far this year. He's pitched a total of 53.2 innings. He's 2-1 and one and has two saves so far. Done a pretty good yeoman's job, mostly in long relief. Well, obviously, then, the little problem that he had last night physically was not serious. They wouldn't be taking a chance on bringing him right back. Well, that's right. It must have been a muscle spasm or a cramp of some kind that uh, just wouldn't release while he was on the mound. And uh, a little physiotherapy and does wonders in one night. He's back on the mound. All right, Bonson, the veteran right-hander, to look at Parker, who got us on the board first in the opening inning with a two-run homer, his 17th of the year. That's a strike. What did it look like over here on the Moreno play at third? I thought he was safe, and yeah. I called him safe. <laughs> However, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if the game keeps going, we won't notice. Two balls and a strike. Parker has homered with a man on, walked and reached on an error, so he's driven in two. He scored our fourth run after reaching on a Spire error in the fifth. That was a tough error on Spire because that ball took a bounce off the seam, and he didn't get a true AstroTurf bounce. That's a ball. And after making the fabulous play on Nikosha in the third, and then that ball that he bobbled on Parker in the fifth you know that it had to be the type of bounce that he got he was expecting that ball up around the letters and got it down below the knees you cannot make that kind of a reaction on a ball hit that sharply that shallow right center Dawson he can't get it now look at Parker you talk about hustle look where that big guy is that is absolute all that is is a leg double that's exactly right and this is why he made first base on the air to shortstop and he also stretches this into a double because right from the get go we see that he hustles it's a ball it's in on him it jams him a little bit but he takes off just as hard as he can the ball is going to fall just in front of Dawson can't make the play and because it bounces away and Parker's hustling he slides into second base with a hustling double all right Bill Robinson who has bounced to short fly the left and singled. We'll be batting with a runner at second. Maybe we can get that run back in a hurry. It's five to one Pirates. Bill Robinson ready to face Stan Bonson. Bonson probably figures, how in the heck is that guy at second base? I made a pretty good pitch on him. But with his strength and with his hustle after he gets the ball out there, he is at second base. Fouled off, and it is strike one to Robbie and Lacey do up next. Remember tomorrow will be radio only but boy we'd sure love to have you with us on that side of things because it's another big ball game Bruce Keeson against Steve Rogers then we'll be home Monday night against the New York Mets and the candy man is ready to trot his act Monday night out against those New Yorkers he loves to pitch against them because he knows the home folks are watching that's strike two now on Robinson. We play single games Monday and Tuesday with the Mets at Three Rivers. Wednesday and Thursday, the Cardinals are in. And then next weekend, two freight trains in the night, brother. <laughs> Old rivals, if there ever were a couple, the Phillies will be in. Did he go? Yes, he did. Monson really threw him a roundhouse curve that time. With this day of the slider and the slurve and the cut fastball, you don't see too many old roundhouses like that. No, he's... Dropped down a little bit, gave it the sidearm wrist motion, and just had the big sweeping breaking ball off the plate outside, and Robbie just couldn't hold it. Lacey's had a double, a single, and a pop-up. Lace playing left field tonight. Ball one. At this moment, Montreal has 54 wins and 41 losses. That's 13 over. The Pirates are 55 and 43. That's 12. The Cubs are 54 and 43, 11. A bouncer toward short. Third baseman cuts in front. Perry throws, but it's safe. And there's Lacey again pumping down that line. Just not giving up simply because he hit the ball on the ground. Well, that's it. We can't emphasize it too much. How hard play an aggressive play makes a ball club. We see that the ball is hit way over to Parrish's left. He cuts in front of Mason, the shortstop. Makes the unhanded throw, but by golly, if he doesn't beat the play, he's safe again 
due to hustle hard play now here's a case of a guy not playing every day he'd like to play more but he also knows that the way the other guys are going and the way the pitching uh, is set up against a certain games he's not going to be in there now tonight he's getting his chance he just got his third hit in the game and two of them by simply busting his fanny to get the first that's right and that's known as a positive attitude he could sit on the bench and sulk all he wants is saying well I'm not playing how do you expect me to produce but he shows you he wants to play on that field here's Madlock over two got a run home last time up with a sacrifice fly the slider missed away and while there's a little dig in it he also means it when some you know with the Dodgers doing the job that they have until the last 10 days or so when they got into the basement there's a strike a lot of people were saying to Lacey since he'd been with that club a number of years say what's wrong with the Dodgers and he'd give a couple reasons he'd say and they also miss me a little bit they used to count on me to fill in and do some things for them. and while he was kind of chiding the guy a little he also had some truth in it that's a ball and it is two and one to Mad Dog. He's two for eight in the series with an RBI. Got the fourth run home in the fifth with a sacrifice fly that got Parker in. He sent Cromartie to the left center field warning track, and the Cobra just waltzed home. Two on, one out. Tap foul right at Carter's feet, and it's two balls and two strikes. Phil Garner, they've cooled him off a little tonight. He's 0 for 3. This will be a good inning for old Scraps to tune it up again. They have their bullpen working, and it looks like it'll be Sosa. Parker's at second, Lacey's at first. And that is Elias Sosa starting to loosen it up in the bullpen down the right side. Their second pitcher, Bonson, is on in relief of Schatzeter, and that's Bonson there working to Madlock, and he got him on the outside corner. Two strikeouts for Bunsen, and let's see where the location was. Well, here Bunsen gets a borderline call. It's a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. We can't see the exact outside, but uh, obviously there was a difference of opinion. Madlock thought it was outside. The umpire thought it was on the corner. Bill Garner, the batter. He's lying to right. He's popped to the catcher, and he's popped to the catcher again. So Scrap Iron is 0 for 3. At this moment, he's batting 313. Two on and two out. Got a feeling these two guys might have been teammates at Oakland. Bonson and Garner. One and one. Bonson's an old head out there. He's got a pretty good idea. Maybe it, all that ability isn't there that once was, but he... Got a savvy out there. He knows where he wants to pitch and how to pitch certain hitters. One ball, one strike. Fly ball, right center. Valentine is there, and the side has been retired. Had some action against Bonson, but nobody on the pay station. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. So we have come to the middle of the seventh. A crowd of over 38,000 paid on a Saturday night which gives them almost 100,000 here in two nights. They're getting up to root their Expos on, and you at home, well, you hope the Buckos can hang on here, won't you? If we do, we go to first place. Bottom of the seventh coming, Pirates five, Montreal one. We are family. 30 years ago, on a hot summer's day, your father taught you how to dig for clams. Now that it's a job, the sun seems hotter and the day longer. The clams taste just as sweet. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, if you've got the time, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. 43 miles a gallon, coming right up. Flash your mileage extender? 1995, right down the drain. Here we go. People do some crazy things to get better mileage. So Golf would like to recommend a few that aren't so crazy. Like removing that extra weight, replacing a dirty air filter, maybe even correcting a small mistake. Here's your problem, sir. It's smart to get the most out of the gas you buy and the place you buy it. All right, big Jim Bibby. Let's see maybe now if he got over that hump. Sometimes when you're pitching, that's uh, Ed Ott back in there, Joe Lynette, Al Monchek. Look at the big smile on Big Joe, huh? 
Yeah, this is a chance to go to the top of the heap, and the Buckos don't want to let it slip by here tonight. Don Robinson on the bench over there pitched one of the games last night. Wasn't around for the verdict, but came on and did what he had to do. Now we're ready to go into the bottom of the seventh inning. Gary Carter will lead it off. He's one for two. In case you're joining us a little late, Jim Bibby went through the first 12 up and down, and he was zinging it. Then Perez ended that no hitter with a sharp single through the left side. Then Carter followed with a single. But he got out of that inning, a double play ball help. But in the sixth, after one out, Cromarty doubled. Dawson got him home. That's the only Montreal run. In the meantime, Bibby's teammates have done a job for him. They've gotten him five runs with the ten hits they've collected. And now time has been called. I think something got away in one of the bullpens or something on the field because the second base umpire came running in. Yeah, I think something was thrown out in the right field area around Parker and the Cobra threw it over the fence. That's about where he hit the home run. <laughs> And that object that he threw out got out of the park about as fast as the ball he hit out. <laughs> he had good stuff on it, whatever it was. All right, Gary Carter, one for two. Bibby working with a four-run lead. Dave Roberts, a lefty, throwing in the bullpen. Crowds him at the knees, ball one. Valentine is on deck over to the right, and down in the hole is Larry Parrish. It's the Montreal seventh. Enrique Romo warmed in the bullpen in the fifth and sixth. Now in the seventh, Dave Roberts. That's a ball. I'm not so sure that Roberts just isn't picking this time to throw. This is not a spot where he'd be used. No, he's just loosening up on the side. He hasn't thrown in a couple of days and just loosen up the suit bone a little bit. Be ready for tomorrow and the next day if he's needed. Now that we've gone by a spot where he would be used, he can just do a casual bit of loosening. Two balls and a strike to Carter. We've out hit him 10 to 4, leading the score 5 to 1. They have used Schatzeter and Bunsen. Big Jim Bibby, the fellow you're looking at now, he has gone all the way so far and pitched with a lead since the opening inning when Parker homered to get the first two. It's 5 to 1 right now, Pirates. Three balls and a strike on Gary Carter. guy trying to get his seventh win tonight or the last month he has done his job out there ends up walking Carter in a leadoff spot in the seventh inning that is the second pass issued by the big burly right hander and it brings up Alice Valentine who is flied to right and grounded into a double play Harvey Haddix is going to come out to chat now. Tanner came out in the sixth inning. One of the few times that Tanner has gone to the mound and not made a change. But it looked as though he just wanted to make sure from Bibby that he was still all right because he just he didn't waste any time and went right up to him. Now our bullpen shows Grant Jackson 23 and Romo 15. That's uh, Grant Jackson throwing and that's big Willie Stargell down there protecting him. No balls are going to hit those two guys are they. Well they sure should. <laughs> Willie's even say well maybe I'll loosen up myself. <laughs> we were very lucky that with the injury to Stargell last night that he is available to pinch hit tonight and can play tomorrow. Because Tony Bartirome was really concerned that that hip that's been of concern all year was going to puff up like a balloon on him again. It wasn't that bad. So, boy, overnight, all of a sudden, the, the picture brightened as far as Captain Willie was concerned. All right, the conference over. Carter at first. Ball one. Oakland beat Seattle six to five. Toronto shut out Detroit three to nothing. Lamanchek evened his record at eight and eight. Tonight, the Yankees, Milwaukee, one to nothing Yankees after two and a half. Cleveland leading the White Sox, two to nothing after two. Boston at Texas, one to nothing Red Sox after three. Boston had a triple play in the first inning. That's their second this week. 
Pop foul back this way. And Nikosha will take a look, but it's back over the screen. In fact, it's halfway up to the booth. Kansas City hosting Baltimore, one to nothing Royals after three. New York did us a favor. They beat the Cubs six to four. Even though King Kong, Dave Kingman, hit three tape measure jabs at Shea. They just kept getting longer. And the Met pitcher just kept throwing it out over the plate. The last two he hit, he must have thought he was back playing T ball. Right out in his wheelhouse, brother. And he's in a groove besides that. Two balls and a strike. Cincinnati and Atlanta split a doubleheader. Reds won the first one 8 6. Braves got even with an 8 to 5 win. St. Louis tonight leading Philadelphia 4 to 2 after 6 and a half. Houston in front of Los Angeles 3 to nothing after 4. San Fran will play San Diego later. You're up to date with the big league board right here. It's 5 to 1 Pirates. Boy, he came back with a good breaking ball after that purpose pitch up and in. Boy, he sure did. That was a gutty pitch right there. Normally, you would think with this type of lead, you'll go ahead and just challenge him. But he's still trying to mix his pitches and blend his pitches so that no one can just sit on him and cut this lead by two runs in a hurry. Yeah, that'd make it five to three with one pop. Valentine 0 for 2 in the game, and he is 4 for 10 in the series. Had two hits in each of last night's games. Sosa continues to throw in their bullpen, so both bullpens are busy. A big game, certainly, for both teams. The way the standings are coming into tonight. Hey, what a strikeout. Got one of their big guys, and he got him on a bad pitch. He was. He was trying to throw a slider down and away, and I think he actually got out in front of his arm just a little bit and took a little off the slider. And it was a slider that was up and away and got away with it. Valentine was really fooled on the pitch, and I'm sure we're going to see the expression on Bibby's face where he said, Whoa, gee, I got away with one. Woo. Thank goodness for that. That's his sixth strikeout to go with a couple of walks. And now Larry Parrish, the third baseman, with a pop up to third and a base on balls. Montreal batting in the seventh. Pirates leading by four. Left field, deep. Home run. his 13th homer 45 runs batted in it's his second homer in the series it's his third home run against the Pirates this year and Chuck Tanner has called on the left hander Grant Jackson so Parrish who is a dead fastball hitter I think Bibbs after getting Valentine was trying to get out in front of Parrish and just didn't do it well that's what's so dangerous about this young lineup of the Montreal Expos you can't let up on anyone in the middle of their lineup. They can all hit the ball out of the park. All have very good power. And as you said, uh, we got by Ellis Valentine. But then grooved one to Parrish, and he was right on the spot. We see Grant Jackson coming into the picture congratulating Bibby on a job very well done. He's battled him all the way. You can see the perspiration just dripping from his hat. He works hard when he's out there, and it's tough for him to go nine innings. But what a great job you did, Jim Bibby. Grant Jackson coming into the ballgame. This is going to be his 49th appearance. Of course, they're all in relief. He's second on our staff with 11 saves. He's won five, lost two with a 3.08 ERA. Here we're going to see the home run pitch. There's the first pitch leading off right down in his wheelhouse. Jim Bibby again trying to get ahead. Parrish knew that the ball was out. He got all of it. A line drive right out over the 375 mark. Lee Lacy had no chance at the ball, watches it go over the fence. So we've got a real ball game on our hands. Score 5-3. We're in the bottom of the seventh. It was a 5 to nothing ball game, but the Expos have chipped away here with three in the last two innings. And you know next weekend is going to be a big one at Three Rivers because the Phillies are going to play the Pirates. And it's a big weekend for you fans to turn out in force at Three Rivers Stadium. Now, August 3rd, Friday night, the Phillies and Pirates play a twilight doubleheader starting at 6.05. 
A single game follows on Saturday afternoon, followed by a big Sunday doubleheader on August the 5th. The Pirates are asking all their loyal fans to come out to Three Rivers to help spur the Pirates on to victory in all five games. You can be the Pirates' 10th man on the field and contribute to bringing the pennant back to Three Rivers. The tickets are going fast, as you might expect, so get them now, and for further information, call 323-1150. The Pirates and the Phillies next weekend at Three Rivers. You ought to be there. And we're going to get a pinch hitter for Mason. It'll be Dave Cash. So the managerial wheels are turning here. We go to the left-hander, figuring Mason is going to be the batter. Jackson comes on, then they lift Mason, who had been in the game for an inning or so, but had not batted. Now Cash will be the hitter. Cash has not had a lot of activity this year, but he's hitting well when he's in, and the first pitch is a ball. He's had 14 for 30, that's a 467 mark, three doubles. Those are his only extra base hits, two RBIs. Hit him on the fist and popped him back here to the right. Nikosha coming, should have a play, and does. That'll make it two away. Boy, Jackson made a good pitch on Dave Cash. He sure did. Ran that ball right in on his fist. Good stuff on it. That was the important thing. Location is one thing, but you have to have very, very good stuff on it. And I think, Milo, we're going to have another pinch hitter, switch hitter, Jerry White. Jerry White is the pinch hitter, and... He's getting loose there in the on-deck circle. Jerry White for the year, batting 281, two homers and 13 runs batted in. White was a pinch hitter in the second game last night and doubled and scored their only run, the only run they got off Lila, and he scored. Dutchman went on from there and pitched a heck of a game. White against us is six for 10 with a homer and one RBI. The batting right handed against Grant Jackson. Two away in the inning. Ball. So Montreal trying to stay in first place has battled back here. That's ball two. They picked up a run in the sixth when Dawson drove in Cromarty. They picked up two here on a two run homer by Parrish, and that is ball three. Warren Cromarty will be next. Jackson asked for and gets a new baseball. He's fallen behind White. 3 0. Roberts now is throwing in our bullpen again, maybe throwing with reason now, along with Romo. Three balls and a strike on the hitter. Switch hitting pinch hitter, Jerry White. Walked him. Jackson third walk of an expo in the game so the scoreboard has turned around a little bit Pirates five runs on ten hits Montreal three runs on five hits Parrish has had four hits in this series and driven in five runs and two of the hits have been out of here boy and you wonder why managers always like to get that one more run if possible Milo this shows you exactly why a ball club can come back and sometimes you never have enough runs Jackson just threw the ball to the backstop That's why now a bases loaded situation in the second that didn't get any more. Look at that throw. No way for a catcher to knock that one down with that velocity. It's just going to jump by you. Then another time in the fifth inning with a chance to get more. And while at that time, if you'd have said, why didn't we get some more? The some of the fans say, well, you're greedy. Would you like to have them now? Two balls and no strikes. And in a game of this importance, you'd like to have all the cushion you could get. Two balls, no strikes. Scott, a switch hitter, is due up next. Foul down the right side, skips up over their dugout roof and into the seats. And it's two balls and one strike. Grant Jackson, veteran reliever, coming on in relief of Bibby. Bibby works six and a third. All three of the runs are charged to him. They are all earned. He walked two and struck out six. The home run by Parrish ended his night's work. Jackson working now with two away in the inning. Two and two. 
Now this is one of those spots where Jackson is in for a specific job. A half swing, shallow left center. Lacey is there, and the side has been retired. Cromartie did not have a full swing. When it started out, it looked like maybe it was going to be trouble, but it hung up for Lacey, came on to make the play. They get two runs on one hit. Base on balls paved the way for one of them. Carter walked and per Parrish homered. There weren't any errors. One man was left. So we have now played seven innings. The Bucks have to go to work with their bats again. And Sosa will be the new pitcher. We'll go to the eighth inning with the Pirates five and Montreal three. All right, Bob, I got an idea. I think we'd be a whole lot more efficient if we order by phone, then send the purchase order. Out of the question. Well, we'd know if they're out of stock immediately. The boss should never buy it. We'd avoid delays, mix-ups, unnecessary paperwork. Come on, what do you say? I, I say we should start ordering by long distance today. I, I, my thoughts exactly. Here, kid, get to work. Boss, I've got a great idea. You're going to love this. Hey, did you play today? Yep, my bowling score. I didn't know they had numbers that low. <laughs> did you remember to play today? Our new address, straight. Hey, that pays 500 to one. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock. Good evening, everyone. It's time for the live drawing of the Daily Number. The Daily Number. It's a big hit. Play today, watch tonight. Great buy. I can have it delivered tomorrow. Great number. I can play it tomorrow. That's it. Well, we've come to an inning when the Bucks can use it. A giant eagle home run sweepstakes inning, and this is it for John McCall of Pittsburgh. John McCall can root the Bucks here in the top of the eighth and try to get us some runs and get us into first place. If a home run is hit, John McCall, you're going to win $700 worth of giant eagle groceries. Now, with the changes, in left field, Jerry White, number 18. Go to second base, you'll find number 30, Dave Cash. Slip over to shortstop, you'll find number three, Rodney Scott, who had been playing second. And on the mound, Elias Sosa working to Nicosia. High inside a ball. Nicosia's walked and scored a run. Robbed of a hit in the third on the play of the game by Spire. Sixth inning, Steve singled and scored our fifth run. That is a ball, makes it 2-0. and oh. Sosa was the loser in the first game of the doubleheader last night. He has been the ace out of their pen, certainly from the right side. Has 11 saves, five wins, six losses. Fouled off. And a good ERA of 196. He is, in the last year and a half, he's become a very fine reliever. Well, as re he's responded to the responsibility placed on him by Dick Williams. And in other roles, it's been maybe short, maybe long. Once in a while, they even started him. But here, he's given him the whole ball of wax, and he's responded very, very well. All right, two and two with that call strike. Sosa working in the eighth inning. Nikosha is the batter. Mike Easler is already on deck. He will bat for Jackson. Strike three call. Mike Easler. Right, we're going to take a look at that pitch that was the strikeout pitch. You might wonder why. Well, what, is, what has turned Elias around? And his pitch is just like this. Low and away, right on the back. Black when he needs it. That's confidence for you when you come in in relief. Made a heck of a pitch. Mike Easler. Uh, Sosa checks in and looks at him. Easler is batting 276, two homers, seven ribbies. Boy, he had a rip that came up empty. He's batting for John McCall of Pittsburgh in Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. Easler is a pinch hitter, is five for 22, two homers, and five ribbies. It's a five to three ball game, Pirates. That was just strength against strength right there. Kent to Colby is throwing in the bullpen. You got the feeling with the importance of this game, and we're in the eighth inning, that Kent to Colby is going to be the choice of Chuck Tanner. He's going to say, well, I want the guy who brung me. Strike call. That's two straight strikeouts, both called. Sosa gets Nicosia and Easler back to back. He got the danger here of Sosa giving them a lift. Well, that's right. And if they gain the momentum, which it appears that they're doing right here, we're going to have to hold on. We could certainly use a quick run. 
Omar Moreno will be the batter and he's taking a little extra time coming around letting our bench get settled down a little bit. He'll be batting for John McCall of Pittsburgh seven hundred dollars in Giant Eagle groceries riding if Omar can belt one out of here and get the run we're looking for. Omar comes in at this time at bat with six home runs ball one no strikes Omar tonight two for three a couple of singles a run batted in and a run scored fouled right there at the plate area one ball one strike Tim Foley two up next we're in the top of the eighth inning the Bucks got out in front five to nothing but the Expos have just whittled away they've cut it down to a two run difference. Montreal scratching and clawing here because their backs are to the wall. They've been in first place a long time. They feel it slipping. Bouncer foul first base side when you get down five to nothing and the team you're playing is the one that can go by you. Doesn't take much. Don't have to get hit in the head like the mule did with a two by four to figure out who's going to be in first if you don't do something. Well, that's right. And trying to scramble and scratch back. Dick Williams only has two players left on his bench. One is infielder outfielder Tommy Hutton and the other is backup catcher Duffy Dyer. All right. That will be good to know when we get into the eighth and ninth if the ball game continues in this manner. Two balls and two strikes on the antelope. He's had a couple of hits, so has Parker. Lacey's had three. We've out hit him 10 to 5. But they've closed it to a two run difference. Back, comebacker for Sosa. And the side is retired 1, 2, 3. And the crowd is alive here. No home run was hit during this Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but no one ever loses here. Our contestant, John McCall, will receive a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at your grocer. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes will be worth $800. So we're going to the bottom of the eighth. We'll get a new pitcher. It's going to be Kent DeColvey. He's going to hang on for dear life. This is the score. Pittsburgh 5, Montreal 3. You pilot ships out to open sea through currents that can run you aground. And the only map you trust is the one you keep in your head. Now comes Miller time. Time to head back for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. North Dallas 40. If you were moving any slower, you'd be going backwards. Very funny, Elliot. Hilarious. A movie about the guys who are giving the cheerleaders something to cheer about. <laughs> hey, you a quarterback sandwich. And wait till you see the weird part. Weird part? Yeah, it gets weird. North Dallas 40. Rated R. Opens Friday at the Showcase Cinema East, Showcase Cinema West, the Warner and McKnight Theaters. That's the story on the big message board. Over 38,000 paid here tonight. Almost 100,000 here in two nights. And there's Kent to Colby. Coming on for the 56th time. He has 16 saves, four wins, six losses. Picked up a victory in the first game last night. To Colby, we were looking at the two, three, four hitters, Rod Scott, Andre Dawson, and Tony Perez. To Colby following Bibby and Jackson to the mound. His job is clear cut. He is to protect a two run lead. And the sinker ball artist ready to work. And it's a strike. Fouled off, strike two. Jacoby is facing the Expos for the eighth time this year. He's recorded a couple of saves, one for Blylevin, one for Keeson. Then he won the game last night. So he's one and one with two saves and seven outings. Three earned runs in nine and a third innings. Boy, that just missed with a sinker, and he wanted to start off by getting that first guy. Boy, he sure does. And that was, I don't know how... A hitter can take that pitch 0 oh and 2. That, that ball is so close. That's when she asked the umpire, well, ring him up anyway, even if it just misses a little. 
Oh, that was close again. Just on the other side of the plate. Now Kent's got to come right back right here and get him. Put him away right now. Dawson's the on-deck hitter. Scott is 0 for 3 in the game. He's 0 for 10 in the series. Foul down the left side behind Ozzie Virgil. Kicks out to the ball boy. Down with the bullpen. Still 2-2. Two two. Pirates 5 runs, 10 hits. Expos 3 runs, 5 hits. We've gotten a home run out of Parker. They've gotten one out of Parrish. It's nip and tuck. These two ball clubs battling for first place in the National League East. Whichever one wins will be in first when the game is over. Simple as that. Smashed to the ground to the shortstop Foley. Fast man running. Foley gets him with ease. Boy, that good, strong, sure arm. Good to see that in that situation. It sure is. And Timmy knew that he had the play in front of him, made the play easily, and came up and made sure he made a good, strong, accurate throw. No fooling around. Andre Dawson, who had a base hit in the sixth inning and drove in their first run, he is one for three tonight. And in the series, their center fielder is one for ten with an RBI. Batting with nobody on and one away. The ball game is in the eighth inning. The scene, Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The Bucks and the Expos in game three of a four-game set. Ball one. Bucks won the doubleheader last night to chop it from two and a half to a half a game difference. Mathematics is simple now. Half a game out. Now, either go in front by a half or slip back to a game and a half. Fouled off. Rolls back to the base of the screen, and it's one and one. You can't ask for more importance in a game at this part of the season, can you? Well, you sure can't. And, and with this kind of excitement in July, almost August, you can imagine what it's going to be like when these clubs face each other again come September when the grass is even a little shorter. Right side, Geiner quickly to it. Oh, that ball gave him a goofy bounce. Now he's going to try to get in there, and he does, because the ball rolled into shallow right center. i got to see that bounce again, Nelly. Well, you and me both, it looks like the ball is, yes, it was, right off the end of the bat, putting that funny spin on the ball. And as it's going in the green of the AstroTurf here, the ball hits and ricochets the other way. Phil Garner just couldn't quite get over in front of it, and with good hustle, Dawson gets into second base. That brings up Tony Perez, who at this moment represents the tying run. He's one for three tonight. He had a single in the fifth inning. He broke up Bibby's bid. Bibby had retired the first 12 in order, then Perez started the fifth with a base hit through the left side. So Dawson's at second, scored as an error. Fouled up to the right side. And with the pressure cooker we're in now, longtime Pirate fan John Valent from Imperial celebrating a 75th birthday as he watches tonight. So, Mr. Valent, cross all your fingers and your toes and let's hang on here. We have all right-handed hitters going all the way down to the number nine spot. So our manager, Chuck Tanner, is going to go with the Colby all the way. 0-1 to Perez. Strike two. Kent to Colby. It goes with the territory. And when you've been coming out of that bullpen as he has the last three years, he comes in. You've got to have a little ice water when you do what he does. Well, you sure do because there's no room for error. It's all on every pitch that you throw, so you've got to have it together when you tow that rubber. No balls, two strikes on Tony Perez with a runner at second and one out. One and two. Now he backed him off a little there. Let's see if he goes sinker away or maybe a breaking ball away. But Tony's such a good hitter in these situations. You don't like to throw him too much off speed because he's he sits on a pitch and he waits very well. I'd like to see him throw that sinker down and away from him. And he's so strong, even if you get it away from him, he's going to hurt you to right or right center. One two pitch. Fouled it off. He ran the ball in. One and two the count. Three more of our Buck Boosters making the big trip to Montreal for this important weekend. Mrs. Telescall, Florence, and Myrtle Deal. They also are going to go to Los Angeles to see us when we go on the West Coast. That's putting it right where it is. Buying those plane tickets and going to see the Bucks on the road, isn't it? All right, one ball and two strikes. There is the batter. Carter due up next. Dawson reaching on a two-base error. As you look in from center, there are the principals on this pitch. 
runner pitcher batter. Yeah. Struck him out and it's two away. First strikeout for the team. Seventh strikeout and let's see what the reaction is from this side armor when he finds out that he's whipped the big bat from Montreal. Look at this. Come on, give us crack a little of that, will you? You said ice water. <laughs> that is ice water. <laughs> no emotion, right? No, it just comes with the territory. That's what you said. All right, here's Carter. He's bounced out on a check swing. Madlock threw him out. Now in the fifth inning, Carter got a base hit. In the seventh, he walked and was on when Parrish homered to cut it from 5-1 to 5-3. It's still 5-3 Pirates. Steve Reich. Kent to Colby. 16 saves. He's appearing in his 56th game of the year. First place is on the line. You've got him out there with a the tying run at the plate. No balls, one strike. One and one on Carter. The on deck hitter is the right fielder Ellis Valentine. Steve Nikosia, the rookie catcher. Caught all the way here in this game. Caught the first game last night. One ball and one strike. They're playing Carter deep. The left fielder playing him to pull. Moreno's playing him almost straight away. Smashed on the ground to short. Foley gobbles it up. Fires and he got him. And the side has been retired. There's that good sure shortstop play again that you love to see when the money's on the line. And it's no runs, no hits, one error on a bad bounce to Garner. And it is one man still on those bases when the inning is over and Tacoby comes in and does the thing he does best. Got the ground ball for the out. And we're going to go to the ninth inning looking for insurance out of our bats. Pirates five, Montreal three. I don't care if I... We're not taking a vacation this year. I can't afford it with the kids. Besides, maybe I don't need one. United has some fantastic, fabulous flying fares. Come again. United's best summer savings ever. I'd have to save real big. Up to 40%. 50% with night coach. Yeah, how about the kids? This summer, if they're 17 or under, you can take them along for half fare. Half fare? Best summer fares ever. That's why we call them. United's fantastic, fabulous flying fares. How could I refuse? A quick commercial for Yanko Chevrolet trucks. Half tons. Three quarter tons. Two wheel drives. Four wheel drives. Love Suburbans, Blazers. One tons. I love Chinese food. Mm. Soap opera sex symbol Josh Taylor from Days of Our Lives co hosts the next Mike Douglas show. Well, I'm strictly macho. With the continuing saga of Dallas star Linda Gray. I was an alcoholic and I was having an affair. Plus soaps, Jay Johnson. See Mike Douglas weekdays at 4.30. Hitting coach Bob Skinner, pretty good hitter in his day and a favorite as a player, too. And there's old Hooley, guy that takes care of all that equipment you look at. He's been doing it low, low, low these many years. And look at him. He's cheering for those buckos, too, isn't he? Rennie Stennett's got a bat. We've got uh, Foley to lead it off. And Tim's in there now. He's one for four tonight, an RBI. He's had three RBIs in the series. Bucks are certainly looking for insurance here. A bouncer out over the mound, but the shortstop Scott glides in front of the bag, throws and gets him, and it's one away in the top of the ninth. Foley thrown out by the shortstop Scott. Elias Sosa waiting for that ball back. So it's in the hands of the two best relievers in each club right now, Sosa and Tacolvi, and it's a 5-3 to three game as Parker will be stepping in. If the Bucks hang on, then they've got Keeson ready for tomorrow against Rogers. Parker's had two hits tonight. He's been on base every time up. Homer, walk, error, double. Drove in two with a homer in the first inning. Scored on an error in the fifth inning when he reached on a shortstop error. Fouled over here to the left. Then doubled in the seventh inning off Bonson, but that didn't blossom into any more trouble. So the Cobra, two for three in the game, has had four for ten in the series and has driven in two with that home run in the first inning, his 17th of the year. There's a line drive to right. Valentine in, went to his knees, hangs on to the ball. 
That ball was really hit hard. Valentine stayed with it. That ball was probably hooking a little when it went to him, wasn't it, Nelly? Well, I think it was not only hooking, but it also had the knuckleball effect. There wasn't any rotation to the ball, and that ball being hit out so hard, the, out <laughs> the outfielder is really handcuffed. Goes down on his knees to make sure he gets a good line on the ball. Makes a nice play. Bill Robinson batting takes a strike. Robbie tonight is one for four. Had a base hit in the fifth inning. Pirates are leading five to three. Let's look to their ninth inning. Valentine Parrish are the first two hitters due. Fly ball left. Cromarty on. Sosa has a one two three inning and has retired six in a row coming out of the pen for Montreal. So the stage is set for another photo finish. This time the photo will have a picture of the first place team when it's developed. So let's hang on buckos and go to the top for the first time since May of 1977. Over two years is too long to wait. So the buckos have to call me ready to shut the door. Hang on with us. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Pirates five, Montreal three. Here's to a week of adventure and glamour on Evening Magazine. Monday, Roller Derby's meanest mama rolls into action. Tuesday, step into the eerie world of the Amityville Horror Story. On Wednesday, see a different side of Soap's Billy Crystal. Thursday, learn some of the secrets for surviving in the wild. And then on Friday, find out how to pick winning horses at the track. Join us weeknights at 7.30 on TV2. Before you lift a finger in the morning, KDKA Radio is already in action. Jack Bogut starts things rolling on just the right note. We tell you everything that's going on around town and around the world. We help you weather the day, settle all scores, stretch your dollar, and even tell you the best way to get to work. That's why more people listen to KDKA than any other radio station in Pittsburgh. So turn us on. KDKA Radio 1020. Pittsburgh is what we're all about. Changes for the Pirates. Number 34, as you see him taking some throws, John Milner. Going from first base to left field, 28, Bill Robinson. So as we get ready for the bottom of the ninth, it may be the biggest game we've played so far this year, Nellie Bryles. Well, it certainly is up to this point because it means we can jump into first and make everybody look up to us instead of us chasing everybody else. And it establishes the fact that the Buckos are dead serious on staying in first. All right, Kent to Colby's ready. He's going to be looking at Ellis Valentine, who is 0 for 3. Desert Marshall of Indiana, PA, 82 years old today, watching the game, recuperating from a broken hip, and hopes that the Bucks can hang on and go to first. And Andrew Jones of Mount Lebanon, watching this game tonight, celebrating his 90th birthday. Let's make it a happy 90th for Mr. Jones in Mount Lebanon. Go to the top of the heap in the east. Valentine has flied to right, grounded into a double play, and struck out swinging. To Colby's looking at him for the first time tonight. With an infield that shows Milner and Garner on the right side, Foley and Madlock on the left. Outfield left to right of Robinson Moreno Parker. Nicosia catching. To Colby working on the hill. Strike call. We're underway in the bottom of the ninth. Pirates have five runs and ten hits. The Expos three runs and five hits. Both bullpens are busy. It's that kind of a ninth. It's that kind of a game. Right side for Parker. Over near the line. Cobra squeezes it. And it's one away in the bottom of the ninth. That'll bring up Parrish, who's been a tough out for Pirate pitchers in this series. He had a two-run homer in the seventh off Bibby. And that closed it from a five to one game to five to three. Dave Cash is on deck. Remember when he was a pinch hitter in the seventh, he stayed on to play second base. Steve Reich. Kent to Colby. How important every pitch is right here from that veteran reliever. Maybe the years don't add up to veteran, but boy, the job he's done puts him in that class. Fouled off, strike two. Boy, that's it. Kent is all business out there. He's coming right after him, strike after strike, and saying, hit my best pitch, which is a sinker. No balls, two strikes on Parrish. 
to Colby. You could drop a bomb out there right now and he wouldn't hear it. Might not even feel the vibration. He is as deep as you can get concentrating on the hitter. One away, ninth inning. To Colby trying to protect a five to three lead. He and Nikosia have gotten together. 0 2 to Parrish. He tried to clearly get him to chase a bad ball there. That's right. He made sure on that pitch, the 0 2 pitch, that it was not a strike. It was going to be outside, just letting him know he's thinking. Enrique Romo warming in the Pirate bullpen. Rudy May, a lefty throwing for Montreal. Ninth inning in game three. Bucks trying to make it three in a row in the series, and here's the one two. Fly ball. Right center shallow. Moreno's play to make. He's there. Pound the glove. Battle open. Put it away. And it's two away. To Colby needs an out. And Dave Cash will be stepping in. As a pinch hitter in the seventh inning, he popped up to the catcher, Nicosia. We're down to nail biting time. Pirates trying to go to 56 and 43. They'd be 13 over. If Montreal doesn't get back in, they'll be 12 over, which means we go by them by a half a game. That's where it is at this moment. One ball, no strikes. Look at that bench. They're getting ready to explode, I'll tell you. If he gets an out, they'll all be out there to greet him. Liner down the right side. They're still alive. Parker over to make sure he doesn't go for two. So Cash comes up with a two-out single in the bottom of the ninth. That's the first hit off to Colby in an inning and two-thirds. It's the sixth Montreal hit of the game. And White, who was a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and walked and stayed in the game, is out there and Hutton one of their utility men is the on deck man Tommy Hutton right now it's Jerry White so Kent to Colby looking at a switch hitter in this spot and you get right down to the bottom line he represents the tying run this is an important man for Kent to Colby to get out we do not want the winning run to come to the plate bouncer short Foley will flip to Garner. The Pirates are in first place in the National League East. All right, let's see the scene on the field. Look at this to Colby, and he did it just like you'd want him to. He did it with a ground ball. And look at those handshakes. Nelly, you know, you know the feeling that's going on right in that picture. Boy, I sure do. I know the feeling I have right now. I've got goosebumps all up and down my back. I know how they feel. We're in first place. We've done one heck of a long jog, coming a long way from eight, nine games back at one point. A lot of people have given up on the Pirates, but here we are on top of the heap. Everybody's got to catch us for a change. All right, just savor it there a little bit. Get to Colby. Are you, if you haven't been around in this situation or know to Colby, you can't appreciate. He is wound up tighter than a banjo string right now. And Nelly, what a game this was. It sure was. It was a contribution by everybody. We had a lot of runs early. Jim Bibby did one heck of a job getting us into the late innings. Had a no-hitter going through four innings, just doing a superlative job. Then our relievers came in, as they have done so so well this year. Came in and closed the door for the most part to Colby, continuing his outstanding job of relief. Gets his 17th save. Closes the door with no further scoring. And as we mentioned, here we are. We are number one. Boy, I tell you, this ball club since the All-Star break, and you go back to it just before the break, and Chuck Tanner, when we were all talking on that last road trip, and remember the game we won in Atlanta, to go to the break, and Bibby won that game. Chuck said, here's the plan. We're going to take three days off. I don't want to see anybody. And you know, some clubs work out the day before. And maybe for this club, the day off was more important than working out, because we'd been in a heck of a schedule. We'd had a two-week road trip that was not only tough, but it was in hot, humid weather. The guys needed the rest more than they needed to come back a day early. 
Chuck said, I'm going to make sure nobody plays till they're tired. Nobody plays doubleheaders unless it's absolutely necessary. The third and fourth guys on that pitching staff, like Roberts and Coleman, when I need them, they're going to have to do the job. I'm not going to wear anybody out. They've all responded to it, and right now it's paid off. We're in first place. Boy, it sure does. And you know, a thing that comes to mind is the home run in a ninth inning, the second game of a doubleheader in Cincinnati, the team Willie. Captain Willie hit the home run. That brought us back from losing three games against Cincinnati and started us on his big win streak. All right, the total board, 5-10-1, and one. winner Bibby, 7-2, and two. winning RBI Madlock, save to Colby, 17. Parker at his 17th homer. Montreal loses their third in a row in this series. They slip behind us into second place. And they went 3-6-2. Loser, Schatziner, he is 5-4. and four. Make that 5-7. and seven. And they had a home run out of Parrish. So with that victory, the Pirates are on the top of the heap. And that winds up Pirate baseball for tonight. Be with us again on Friday, August 10th at 8 o'clock from Veteran Stadium. What a big one that'll be when the Bucks meet the Philadelphia Phillies. Pirate baseball has been brought to you in part by Daily Juice Products, sponsor of Daily's favorite pirate contest. And you'll be sure to vote in Daily's favorite pirate contest. And in part by Bell of Pennsylvania, who reminds you to call someone across the miles today. After all, what else is so nice for the price? Coverage of tonight's big ball game from Montreal, produced by Doug Kennedy, directed by Brian Seif. Production and technical facilities provided by TPC Pittsburgh. Studio director is Brad Rich. So until we greet you tomorrow on radio, and I know you won't want to miss it, the Bucks have got a sweep in order to stay in first place. This is Milo Hamilton along with Lanny Frateri and Nelson Bryles saying so long, everybody, from Olympic Stadium in Montreal, where the final score was the Pirates 5 and Montreal 3. And there's the guy who saved it and put us up there, Kent DeColby. After station identification, stay tuned for Hee Haw, already in progress. This is Pirate Baseball on TV2.